On day one, I spawned into the jungle as Ant-Man, everyone's favorite size-shifting superhero. Whoa, this is awesome! I've always wanted to be able to shrink down really tiny. Hold on a minute, why is my suit not working? Darn it, I must be out of pim particles. I wasn't sure how I managed to get here or where here even was. Everything around me looked like it was normal, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Why isn't my shrinking tech working? Maybe there's something I can do to fix it. Just then, I heard the crawling of a lot of legs and turned around to see a spider. It was huge, way bigger than any I had ever seen before. Something weird was definitely going on here. Whoa, aren't you a little big? Then there came the horrible noise of something whirring loudly and it was coming closer and closer. I could see a huge, vicious looking creature coming straight towards me. It looks like a huge head with much smaller arms. Well, well, isn't that the question of the day? Are you sure it's not you who's a little smaller than normal? Huh, that is a good question. I suppose I don't feel any smaller than I normally do, but then if I was, how would I know? Why don't I save you the trouble then? You are indeed much smaller than normal, and it was by my hand that you were shrunk down to a more manageable size. Hey, that hardly seems fair. You can't just go around shrinking people. Who the heck are you anyway? I am Modok. Cower before me, Zozo, for you're trapped here in my miniverse. Miniverse? Oh no, like a tiny universe? Precisely. Here, I'm in charge. Nothing is its normal size, and now you're trapped here. But let's give you a challenge, shall we? If you can make it out of the miniverse within 100 days, I'll let you go free. But if not, then you'll be trapped in my tiny world forever! <laughs> and you think getting out will be easy? Think again! Suddenly, Modok unleashed a blast of energy that burned the huge spider to a crisp. I had to get to cover so I didn't get blasted too, but it was too late for the poor spider. Yeesh, talk about having a big head. On day two, I tried to find my way out of this crazy jungle I was in. The trees were so dense that I could hardly see a clear path in front of me. On top of that, I realized I only had five hearts, so I had to be careful. If I ran into Modok again, or any other dangers in his miniverse, then I'd be in serious trouble. Just then, I overheard a loud, angry buzzing sound. When I followed it, I stumbled across a group of enormous tarantula hawks. They were way bigger than normal insects, just like the spider had been. Oh man, these are some nasty looking bugs. Maybe I can communicate with them. Well, well, look what's buzzing, my bug bros. A lost little superhero with no powers. This is the one Master Modok trapped here. Come on, let's get him. Destroying him will win us a lot of points with our master. They attacked me. I quickly noticed I had a bow in my inventory and used it to try and fend them off. But at my size, I wasn't able to do much damage at all. Plus, I was outnumbered. No, I can't die. Not yet. I still have to find my way out of this miniverse. But then, right as I needed help, Someone came rushing out of the trees and fended off the tarantula hawks. It looked like it had the body of a bee, but with huge arms and legs like a person. What the heck was going on in this place? Hey, are you all right? You should really be careful out here. Thanks for saving me. What's your name? You can call me Harlow, the honey golem. What's yours? Well, technically, I'm meant to be Ant-Man, but I don't have any powers. So I guess I'm just Zozo. On day three, Harlow brought me to his hive, where there were even more honey golems just like him. They were living in a cave and had built themselves an entire community underground. Wow, I've never met any honey golems before. We were created in one of Modok's experiments. That big head of his house is a pretty big brain. He's been using this miniverse to perform all kinds of crazy experiments on the innocent insects and creatures here. We started out like normal bumblebees, but now we're monsters. Hey, I don't think you're monsters. You saved me from those mean tarantula hawks. Harlow explained that Modok had been causing havoc all over the miniverse with his mad scientist experiments. I told him that I needed to find my way out of there before my 100 days were over. You need to get out of here, I understand. But you're going to need some help if you have any chance of escaping the miniverse. So how about I tag along to assist you? Wow, thank you so much, Harlow. But wait, how are you gonna help me get out of here? Well, let me cut you a deal. You wanna be freed from the miniverse, and I want the miniverse to be free from Modok. So how about we team up? 
I'll come with you. It can be dangerous, but I know my way around, so I can navigate and provide protection. And in return, you can build up your strength so we can stop Modok's schemes. Once that's done, I'm sure we'll find a way to get you out of here. What do you say? Okay, sure. If we can take down that big-headed bad guy and get me out of here, then that would be amazing. Then we better get to it. Modok is ruthless, and he's left plenty of his experiments running wild out there. They'll do anything he wants. So Harlow and I headed out as a team. On days four through five, we made a start on gathering some resources and building up my strength for the fight ahead. I punched some trees and gathered enough wood to make a crafting bench. Afterwards, I made myself a set of wooden tools. Then, Harlow showed me a cave where I could mine for cobblestone, and then I used that to craft a set of stone tools as quickly as possible. Harlow and I then explored a bit and eventually found a spot where we could build our base on. We were pretty far from the Honey Golem's underground city, so I built a room for both Harlow and I to stay in using the materials I had been gathering. It's not exactly the Avengers Tower or the Baxter Building, but it's a start at least. Hopefully, we won't have any trouble from MODOK and his experiments bothering us while we're here. Just as I had finished up, Harlow brought some food that he'd managed to find for us. He wasn't kidding. He really knew his way around the miniverse. I ate some, and when I did, I quickly gained 10 hearts for a total of 15 hearts. Look at that. You've got a little bigger, too. At this rate, I'll be tough enough to take on MODOK in no time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet, but I'm sure you'll get your chance soon. With our new base already, night was beginning to fall, so Harlow and I settled in for some much-needed sleep. On day 6 through 8, Harlow and I went exploring, searching for some more materials to craft new items and maybe even upgrade our base. Harlow led the way as we headed back towards the jungle area, being careful we didn't run into any more of those awful tarantula hawks, or something even worse. Soon, we found a jungle spider who was being terrorized by creepers. At first, we thought they were just normal creepers, but there was something wrong about them. They had longer, freakier legs. They were mutants, made during one of MODOK's mad experiments. Hey, leave that spider alone. They didn't listen, so I started firing arrows at them using my bow. I scored a few direct hits, and it angered the mutant creepers. Luckily for me, though, Harlow had my back, so as they came charging at us, we were ready for a battle. Even with my weapons and Harlow's strength combined, our fight with the mutant creepers was still a tough one. They were much stronger than your average creepers. But with a few well-placed shots and with Harlow's strength, we were eventually able to overpower them before they managed to explode. We went to check that the spider was okay. Thank you both for your help. My name is Jupe, the jungle spider. Whoa, spiders can talk wow. here. What do you mean? Huh? Harlow, you mean you can't hear Jupe? Oh, of course, my Ant-Man helmet. It must be allowing me to talk with bugs. I hate to ask, but there's another of MODOK's experiments nearby. I'm far too weak to fight it, but maybe you could beat the beastly thing? Leave it to me. Zozo, you guys go on ahead. I'm going to go back to the base to collect some more supplies. On days 9 to 10, I followed Jupe back to where she had last seen the Mad Modox evil experiment. After a fair bit of searching, we found ourselves at what was left of Jupe's spider nest, with a massive mutant earth elemental roaming nearby. That's the monster. It destroyed my home. Jupe was understandably upset, but unfortunately had caught the elemental's attention by accident. The creature spotted us almost immediately and instantly started making its way towards us, ready to attack. Oh no, I really wish we hadn't left Harlow back at the base. While Jupe scurried off to hide, I pulled out my sword and took a swing at the earth elemental. I could barely leave as much as a scratch. It was way too powerful, and I was still too weak to fight it. Before I could get overwhelmed, I ran as fast as I could, only stopping when I met up with Jupe. We'll have to come back when I'm stronger. Maybe if I can fix the suit, I can grow to a giant size and stomp him. I'm sure you will, but in the meantime, what should I do? I have nowhere to go now that this monster has ruined my home. Well, for the time being, you're welcome to stay at my base with me and Harlow. On days 11 to 12, I made my way back to my base with Jupe beside me. I quickly built her a room where she could spin some new webs to make herself nice and comfy. Thank you for coming to help me and for taking me in, Ant-Man. Most people would see a spider my size and be terrified. That's okay. I'm glad I can understand you through this helmet. How did you get to that size? Did it have anything to do with MODOK? Oh, MODOK, that horrible madman. He's been toying with everything here in this miniverse. 
He alters sizes, creates new creatures whenever he feels like it, and abandons them if they won't fight for him. We'll never be at peace until someone puts an end to his schemes. Sounds like a job for me. After I had talked with Jupe, I went out and mined for some more materials. I hadn't had a chance to gather anything since fighting the elemental. I managed to come across iron and coal, so I made a furnace to smelt the iron and crafted some iron tools and boots. After all that work, nighttime was approaching, so I had to move quickly if I wanted to take advantage of the last moments of daylight. Walking a short way from my base, I found gravel and began to dig for flint, then kept that in my inventory. On days 13 to 15, I was feeling eager to get stronger and to see if I could get my powers back, so I spoke to Harlow for his advice. Well, I only became this strong because of Modok's experiments, but you should probably try training. I hear that's what a lot of superheroes do. Practice does make perfect after all. I guess that's worth a shot. I then went out in search of some of Modok's lower level cronies to fight. After a bit of traveling, I ended up finding myself in a forest. There were strange creatures flying about in the air, and they were a lot smaller than most other mobs I had seen. But what these dark leeches lacked in size, they made up for in numbers. Okay then, let's take you on. I launched into an attack, wielding an iron sword I had crafted. The dark leeches swarmed me, but I knew that the best way to attack them was up close. They were too small for me to pick off from a distance with my bow and arrows. They were fast, but each one could be slashed down with ease. I just had to be careful not to get bitten by any of them. After a lot of swinging my sword about, I managed to defeat the swarm of dark leeches and come away victorious. The dead leeches dropped some healing potions. Whoa, now this should definitely come in handy. I used the healing potions, and to my surprise, it caused me to gain a few more hearts. Well, I guess that just happened. On day 16 to 19, after beating those dark leeches, I decided to go off exploring a bit more to keep building my strength up. During my travels, I stumbled upon a village, but when I went to take a closer look, there was nobody around to be seen. I searched all the buildings. However, none of the villagers were in their homes. Huh, I wonder what happened here. Where did everybody go? You should not have come here. Ha! Ah, you scared me! It was the ghost of an ordinary villager. No wonder I couldn't find anyone here. Something bad must have happened to them. It is not safe here. You must leave while you still can. What do you mean? What happened to you? We were living peacefully here until Modoc came into this miniverse. He took the people of this village to use in his experiments. He's a monster! In his madness, he tried to create a creature that was powered by anger that would get stronger the more enraged it became. But the experiment went wrong and the creature ransacked our town. This is why you must leave. It's still here. Wait, a creature powered by anger? That sounds a lot like the Hulk. Suddenly, a villager beast came bursting through the roof to ambush me. The ghost vanished in fear while I rushed outside and took out my weapons, ready for a fight. The beast wasn't as strong as I was expecting, but we were still pretty evenly matched. It was looking like I might need to run away again. That is, until the ghost appeared again and helped distract the beast. Quick, while well, his back is turned. Zozo smash! With a big swing of my sword, I put an end to the villager beast, and the battle was done! Whew, thanks for the help! On days 20 through 22, I was heading back to my base. On the way, I kept my superhero training going by fighting a few zombies that I came across. I took them out with ease like they were nothing. Harlow was right, practice does make perfect, and I'm definitely improving. As I got closer to the base, I gathered some extra iron, which I held onto. I'd be able to improve my gear with it once I made it home. I finally arrived and smelted the ore I found into ingots. I then crafted some iron armor and an iron shield to defend myself in future battles alongside with a new sword since mine was about to break. Well, if a shield works for Captain America, then it'll work for me. Starting to feel a lot more confident with my superhero skills, as well as my newly crafted tools and weapons, I decided to pay a visit to an old enemy. Jupe, I'm gonna go and teach that Earth Elemental a thing or two about what happens when you mess with innocent spiders' nests. I made my way back to the ruins of Jupe's old nest, and that's where I found the Elemental waiting for me. It immediately charged directly at me, swinging his huge rocky fist as he tried to hit me. I blocked with my new shield, but his attack stunned me, making it difficult to keep my health up or move out of the way. 
Luckily, Harlow had given me plenty of food to bring with me, and my armor protected me from each of the elemental's blows, too. He continued to swing at me, but I had already taken down the villager beast. This was just another of Modok's experiments. Waiting for the perfect opportunity, I landed the perfect hit and managed to defeat the Earth Elemental, causing him to burst into rocky smithereens! Woohoo! Among the stone remains of the Elemental was a note, so I picked it up to take a closer look. It was an order from Modok! Don't let that no good hero find where we've stashed the Pym particles! If he finds out where they are, he'll be able to use them to power his suit! We can't have him shrinking down to sneak out of the miniverse or growing bigger than a house. He'd wipe us all out in no time. Whatever happens, stall him. Keep him away from the particles. Of course, Modok's the reason why I can't get my Ant-Man suit to work. I can keep getting stronger, but without Pym particles, I can't use my powers. So I guess the question is, where do I start looking? From day 23 to day 26, I returned back to my base to give Jupe the Jungle Spider the good news. Jupe, I did it! I defeated the elemental that had ruined your home. You can go back anytime you like now, though of course, you're always welcome to stay here too. That's so wonderful to hear, Zozo. I think I'll stay to help you until Modok is defeated. Then I'll return to my true home. All thanks to you. Feeling good after helping Jupe, I made myself a flint and steel. This will be perfect for making campfires. After that, I spent some time building a strong perimeter wall around my base. That'll help keep out the mobs at night. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to venture out into the desert to continue my search for the Pym Particles. Without them, I'd never have any hope of defeating Modok. While out in the desert, I ran into a Pharadon. Hey, sorry to bother you, but would you happen to know where I could find some Pym Particles around here? Pym Particles, hmm? I can't tell you exactly where to find them, but I have some theories. I'm actually an advanced particle scientist, and I wrote my thesis on BIM particles. Oh, wow! That actually sounds like super valuable knowledge! Want to come stay at my base and work on this together? I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Frank, and sure, I'll take you up on that offer. As Frank headed back, I decided to mine some sandblocks that I could take back to base. When I arrived again, I turned the sand blocks into grass blocks and used them to create windows in my base. That should get a little light on the situation, but I didn't get to enjoy my new windows for long. Harlow the honey golem ran towards me, looking panicked. Zozo, I need your help. I just got word there's been an attack on my underground community. What? We better go immediately. From day 32 to day 35, Harlow and I ran straight to the caves that protected the underground community of honey golems. The cave was crawling with giant, vicious centipedes, a type of aggressive mutant centipede created in Modok's evil laboratory. Don't worry, everyone. We're here to help. Keep away from the centipedes. But we had arrived a little too late. There were so many centipedes, and even though we tried our best to fight them all off, sadly, we spotted no honey golems inside. Hopefully, some escaped. Harlow and I worked together to defeat the rest of the centipedes, but the damage was already done. I'm so sorry, Harlow. I wish we could have done more. We must defeat Modok, Zozo. We can't let him get away with this. From day 36 to day 39, I needed to get away from my base. After the incident in the caves, I had trouble even looking Harlow in the eye. Instead, I went out to the swamp, seeing if I could find any interesting materials out there. While searching, I met a joust who needed a favor. Hey, stranger, Jerry's the name. Being a joust is my game. Now, I don't want to impose, but my little swamp shack is surrounded by crocodiles. If you were to help scare those chompy critters away, I'd give you something in return. Hmm, there is something I need. Do you happen to know anything about Modok? Modok? Oh, me and that guy go way back. We went to Miniverse College together. He's always been a huge meanie. If you scare off those crocodiles, I'll tell you what I know. Deal. I went further into the swamp until I found Jerry the Joust's shack, which was surrounded by vicious crocodiles. I pulled out my sword and ran in, swinging and flailing. Get out of here, crockies. Go on, get. Once the crocodiles had been defeated, I returned to Jerry the Joust and asked him what he knew about Modok. He acts like he's confident, but believe me, the guy's real insecure. He's only as strong as the monsters working with him. If you're able to become strong enough and get him alone, that's your best chance at defeating him. 
From day 40 to day 43, I decided I'd spend some more time sprucing up the base. Seeing as I was spending so much time there, I should at least make it look nice. I spent most of my time working in the yard. I put in some nice trees and flowers that really livened up the whole base. Who'd have thought I'd have such a green thumb? After that, Harlow approached me and told me that there were a lot of honey golems who needed a place to stay after the centipedes destroyed the underground town. Of course, I invited them all to come stay with us and even built some extra rooms onto the base so they'd all have a place to stay. That's when Frank the Ferradon came to me with some exciting news. Zozo, I've been doing some research and I got a lead on some potential pim particles out in the Badlands. That's awesome! To the Badlands I go! From day 44 to day 49, I went out to the Badlands in search of the Pym Particles that could give me my powers back. Instead, I found Modok and one of the freakiest looking minions in his roster, the floating, bug-eyed Beholder! Looking for Pym Particles, Zozo? As a matter of fact, I am. So if you'd kindly step out of my way, I'm gonna keep searching. Oh, I'll save you the job. I have them. What? I already took the particles, and I'm going to use them in my experiments. They'll give me the power to create even larger, more dangerous monsters. And monsters so tiny, you won't even see them until they get you. The miniverse will be my personal playground, and then I'll fan out and take over the entire multiverse. I'll never let you get away with it. That isn't up to you, Zozo. Beholder, destroy him. I'm going back to the lab. Odok flew away, leaving only me and the Beholder. I pulled out my sword and tried to hide my fear as the terrifying monster flew towards me. Maybe we can just talk it out? From day 50 to day 53, I started fighting the Beholder because, as it turns out, he did not want to just talk it out. He was fast and strong, but thankfully I was able to use all the skills I learned so far to gain an advantage. I lost a few hearts along the way, but the Beholder was eventually defeated. Jeez, I hope I never have to see another one of those again. While I was still resting after the fight, I noticed that the fallen beholder had dropped something. A notebook marked Book of Research, written by Modok. That's perfect. Maybe it can give me some inside information. The inside of the book read, Without the Pym Particles, my research is coming up short. But soon, soon I'll be able to take it all to the next level. When I have the particles, the first thing I'll do is take the smallest threat and make it into the biggest one, then unleash it on those hapless fools in the mountains. The mountains? That's where my base is. I need to get back there immediately. From day 54 to day 57, I ran back to the mountain as fast as I could, ready to head off whatever monster that Modok had unleashed. And the last thing I could have expected was a giant endriophage rampaging through the mountains. Its size must have been massively enhanced by pim particles. I don't even want to know what kind of ender flu that monster would give you. I tried to attack its legs, but that didn't seem to have any effect. Its head was its only weakness, but I didn't know how to get at it. And what's more, from the direction it was heading, it was going straight towards my base. Think, Zozo, think! Wait, I have an idea! I ran ahead of the giant endurophage's path and started desperately digging a pit into the ground. As the giant endurophage approached, it fell into the pit, putting its head at eye level with me. Time to cure this walking virus. With one strike of my sword, the giant endurophage was defeated, and it dropped some pim particles into the pit. At long last, they were mine. I collected the particles and went straight back to my base, where I figured Frank the Ferradon would know what to do with them. You found the pim particles. This is amazing. So can I use them to change my size? No, not yet. Leave them with me, Zozo. I'll refine them and get them ready for use. You'll be ready to take the fight to Modok in no time. From day 58 to day 62, I decided that it was time to refine my base and gear a little more and put all my new scientific skills to good use. I started by making Frank a scientific lab so he could help me more efficiently. After that, I did improvements to my room, adding more chests and forges and making it feel more fit for me. It's like having my own little laboratory. Think Pim would be so proud. Then I made my way to a nearby diamond mine and took all the diamonds I collected back to the crafting room so I could upgrade my gear. I made a full set of diamond armor to help protect the fragile technology of my suit and a diamond sword to help me pack a punch. But even though my equipment had never been cooler, my base was looking a little gloomy. To spruce it up, I added some new couches so me and the boys could relax. This has got to be the coolest base in the miniverse now! 
From day 63 to day 66, Harlow the Honey Golem approached me at the base with a cool idea. Zozo, I think it's important to get as many allies as we can when fighting Modok. We have no idea how many mutants and monsters he's created out there, so we need to get a team of our own. That's a really good point, Harlow. Where do you think would be a good place to look for more allies? Try the forest. I bet Modok's goons have hassled a lot of creatures up there. They'll probably be eager to sign up. Harlow was right. I needed to leave the base and venture over to the forest where I could find new potential team members for our anti-Modok movement. But the forest was way bigger than I thought, so I was searching for a whole day without finding anything. I hope this whole thing wasn't a waste of time. I can't afford to waste any of my 100 days to get out of the miniverse. My thoughts were interrupted by a huge figure running through the forest towards me, a polyfam. I pulled out my sword in a panic and prepared for a fight, but the polyfam stopped. He wasn't here to fight me. Please, kind stranger, my name is Peter, and I was playing with my son out in the forest when suddenly a monster attacked and took him. I need help to save my son. Will you help me? Of course I'll help you, Peter. I'm Zozo. You lead the way. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Peter Polifam deep into the dark forest. It didn't take long for us to find exactly what we were looking for. Peter's son, a baby Polifam, being chased around the forest by a scary, buzzing, warped Moscow. That looks exactly like one of Modok's experiments. Modok? He's the supervillain that made all the mutant creatures around here. Stand back, Peter. I'll take care of this one. I pulled out my sword and ran in, getting the warped Moscow's attention and distracting him from attacking Peter's son. A nasty mutant attacked me and we started to fight. Didn't anyone ever teach you not to pick on kids, Moscow? Every time he hit me with his powerful Moscow arms, I could feel my health going down. But I needed to keep fighting for Peter and his son's sake. It was a hard battle, but in the end, the warped Moscow was defeated and father and son were together again. You did me and my son a great service, Zozo. One day, in your hour of need, I will repay you for this. No problem, man. It's just what heroes do. From day 71 to day 74, still feeling good about helping Peter and his son, I continued my search through the forest. I really do love going on adventures. And if you love going on adventures, like, subscribe, and search ZOZO for more videos from me. Ooh, is that an abandoned mine? I approached an abandoned mine deep in the forest. I didn't expect to make any friends down there, but I figured I would at least be able to mine for some useful materials. I'm always making the best out of a weird situation. But in that abandoned mine, I didn't find any decent materials. I found Modok himself waiting for me. You've fallen into my trap, you pathetic teeny tiny Ant-Man. The only thing tinier than you is your brain. Well, my brain would have to be tinier than me, or it wouldn't fit in my body. Silence, fool! Modok was angry that I made him look dumb, so he fired an energy blast at me. He missed, and I ran back at him with my diamond sword. But when I hit him, nothing happened! What? Force field technology, son. It protects me in response to trauma. You'd need to be a lot bigger and stronger than that to even put a scratch on me. And with that, Modok laughed and teleported away. I still wasn't nearly big or strong enough to defeat him. From day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base, feeling glum after not being able to defeat Modok yet again. Maybe if I make some defenses, that'll make me feel better. I decided to create a few guardhouses so that I would feel more at ease and my friends would be able to seek refuge on whatever side of the base they happened to be at. Building is so cool! As if on cue, Frank the Pharadon approached me. I agree, Zozo, and it's thanks to some good, old-fashioned science that I've finally been able to refine these pimp particles and upgrade your suit so that it can do what it always should have done. You mean, I'll be able to change size now? I won't just be a mini Ant-Man? Exactly, Zozo. Give it a whirl. I activated my refined pimp particles and felt myself growing to my proper height, at long last, complete with double the hearts. It feels good to be back, Frank. From day 79 to day 84, seeing as I was back to my full strength, I wanted to go and settle some old scores. First, I went deep into the jungle and encountered some old enemies, some of the tarantula hawks that were bothering me and my friends when I was tiny. Hey, look, it's the pipsqueak. Oh, wait, he doesn't seem like such a pipsqueak anymore. Thank you for noticing. I fought the tarantula hawks who had once been such a challenge with my new strength and my diamond sword. Within a few minutes, they were all defeated. I went on the rest of my journey with my head still high. On my travels, I ran into a mad scientist doing some research deep in the jungle. 
Hello there, I'm Mike, the local mad scientist. I'm conducting a wildlife survey. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm Zozo. Nice to meet you, Mike. I've just been testing out my new pin particles. They help me change my size at will. I can get bigger or smaller. That sounds fascinating. Would you mind telling me more about this for my research? Not at all. I spoke to Mike the mad scientist for a while, explaining to him exactly how the particles worked and how my suit used them. All the while, he looked super interested and made notes. In the end, he was so thankful, he gave me an enchantment he'd crafted that would increase the damage of my sword. Wow. My luck looked like it was finally turning around. From day 85 to day 89, my luck turned around again, for the worst. I returned to my base, only to find it being attacked by a gang of water elementals working for MODOK. I just can't catch a break around here. I pulled out my diamond sword and ran into fight. I didn't want to use the full power of my pin particles just yet, because I knew I'd need them to take on Modok himself. So I fought the water elementals the old-fashioned way. And I'm gonna make you regret trying to destroy my base. I defeated most of them, but a bunch of water elementals started to make a run for it, and I chased after them. I didn't want any of them to get away after this. But while I was running, I saw a distressed-looking Kato Blapas standing in the distance, trying to get my attention. Stranger, please! I need your help! My friend, little Kato, is stuck in that really tall tree! I'm worried he's gonna fall and hurt himself! Don't worry, I can help! I used my pin particles to get a lot bigger. Due to my size, the little Kato was confident enough to jump towards me and landed safely. Thank you, Zozo! No problem! And with that, I continued the chase! From day 90 to day 94, I chased the gang of water elementals until they were forced to stop at a ravine. Nowhere to run, guys. Now we have to fight, and I think I'm owed a little payback. Without a second's hesitation, I started fighting the water elementals. One by one, I defeated them until only one remained. He was unusually good at taking my hits, even with a diamond sword. I don't understand. How are you so tough? Before he even replied, he punched me so hard, I lost some of my hearts. Naive little Ant-Man. I'm not just any water elemental. I'm one of MODOK's greatest experiments. The angrier I get, the stronger and faster I become. And believe me, you got me pretty angry, Ant-Boy. And just like that, I knew I was in for the biggest fight of my life so far. From day 95 to day 97, my battle with the water elementals continued. He was the strongest and fastest enemy I'd ever faced, and as he got angrier, his skills increased. Face it, Zozo, you're outmatched. I'm going to crush you like an ant. I clearly couldn't defeat him like this. I needed a new strategy, but how could I defeat someone who got tougher as they got angrier? Wait, I have it! I needed to calm down. That way, he'd be weak enough to lose. I just needed to call him down. Water elemental, imagine rainbows and puppies. I don't know what you're trying to do, Amp Boy, but it won't work. Think about calming waterfalls and the smell of fresh cut grass. Think about relaxing at the end of the day and watching your favorite TV show. No, how dare you? You can't do this to me. I'm getting calmer. Think about getting to sleep in late on a Saturday. Think about getting a massage and drinking some herbal tea. Think about meditating in the middle of a meadow filled with dandelions. Blast it. I've never felt so calm. I finally used my pin particles in combat, becoming tiny and attacking the water elemental with great speed, making me even stronger. It only took one hit like that, and the water elemental was pushed into a corner. He dropped something. It looked like a map. Wait, is this a map directly to Modok's secret laboratory? Why would you even have this on you? You work for the guy. I have a terrible sense of direction, okay? But it doesn't matter. You may have defeated me, but you'll never defeat Modok. He's got the biggest brain in the miniverse. Yeah, and the smallest heart. I'm gonna defeat Modok if it's the last thing I do. And with that, the water elemental vanished. On day 98, after defeating all the water elementals and finding out the location of Modok's secret laboratory, I returned to my base to speak with my friends, Harlow the Honey Golem, Jupe the Jungle Spider, and Frank the Pharadon. Friends, it's time. I need to defeat Modok once and for all. 
I want to thank you for all the help you've given me, but even if I win, this might be goodbye, because I'll need to leave the miniverse." Harlow spoke up first. Zozo, you've helped me through some tough times. When my people's homes were destroyed by Modok, you were there for me. So after you've taken him down, I wish you luck in whatever comes next. Then, Jupe, the jungle spider. You're one of the most heroic people I've ever met, Zozo. You may be an Ant-Man, but you've got the heart of a jungle spider, and I mean that as the highest compliment I can give. And of course, Frank the Pharadon. You're not just a hero, Zozo, but a brilliant scientist. I believe you've gained all the knowledge and skills you need to defeat that big-headed monster. All you need to do now is believe in yourself. On day 99, with everything prepared, I decided to make my way to Modok's evil laboratory so I could stop the dastardly villain and escape the miniverse once and for all. Using my refined pin particles in my fully upgraded suit, I decided to make myself incredibly tiny so none of Modok's guards would spot me. On the way there, I ran into a cockroach who was about the same size as me in my shrunken form. Wow. Hey, Mr. Cockroach, hope you're having a good day. I'm on my way to defeat a supervillain. The name's Carl, my friend, and I wish you luck in your quest. Defeating a supervillain sounds like a pretty cool thing for you to do. I continued on my quest until I reached the laboratory, but as could probably be expected, it was surrounded by sentinels, powerful mutant zombies created by Modok's evil experiments. Maybe they won't see me if I'm tiny, but what if they do? I don't know if I could take them all on at once. Then I heard big, thundering footsteps coming towards me, and I turned to see Peter Polyphan. Maybe I can be of service. Peter, have you come to help me? Sure have, Zozo. You helped me save my kid, so now I'm going to help you stop your supervillain. I'll distract those doofy mutant zombies. You head in there, and you bring the big boss down. You got it, Peter. Let's end this thing. On day 100, I ran past the gang of mutant zombies while Peter Polyfam distracted them and entered Modok's evil laboratory. The big-headed bad guy himself was waiting for me as soon as I came in. It's over, Modok. I know your plans, but they won't do you any good now. I have the pin particles, and my suit is fully operational. If I was you, I'd just give up. But you're not me, Zozo. I'm a genius, a visionary scientist. You're just a goofball who likes to dress up like a bug. If you were truly smart, you'd be able to see the value in what I'm doing here. All I see is an evil guy who's hurting people to benefit himself. And if you can't see that, then I guess we better just get this over with. I prepared to size shift into an even tinier version of myself when Modok blasted me with some kind of shockwave that blocked my powers. Too bad, so sad. Mutated zombies, take care of him. A bunch of Modok's mutated zombies came running out to attack me. Of course, a coward like him wouldn't want to fight for himself. I'm ready. I'll take you all on. I pulled out my diamond sword and attacked before they attacked me. Thanks to my upgraded suit and diamond armor, it's not like they could do much damage to me anyway. Soon enough, every single one of them was defeated. It was just me and Modok. You still can't defeat me. Do you really think you have any hope at defeating my power and my genius, you puny little Ant-Man? Puny? Is that what you're calling me? I activated my pin particles and started to grow. It didn't take long for me to tower over Modok with my new giant size. How about now, Modok? Oh no! With one more strike from my giant size, Modok was defeated. Finally, after 100 days of struggle, I could leave the miniverse. On day one, I spawned in as Iron Man. And look, I'm not a baby. I'm all powered up. I flew around firing lasers. This was really cool. These zombies have met their match. Time to say goodbye. I blasted the zombies out of the way. They were no match for the might of Iron Man. Once they were all destroyed, I was floating over the forest, scanning the area. Suddenly, something hit me out of nowhere. What was that? I didn't see who it was, but I heard a voice. Say goodbye to your power. I had hit the ground, but managed to survive. But look, now I only have five hearts. I had to hurry and leave the area, though. Whoever that was could come back. Later, as I was escaping through the forest, a group of zombies came running up to me. I know how to handle these guys, but that was when I had my suit and powers. I didn't stand a chance now. I had no choice but to run away. Oh, I can't 
believe someone caught me off guard. They better watch out, because I'll stop at nothing to get my power back. But that was another day, so I settled in for the night. On day two, I woke up all alone, still feeling weak without my powers. I had to figure out who was out to get me. I've got quite the mission ahead of me. I'm going to be building and making all kinds of really cool things. But before I can do that, I need to start with the basics. I went outside and got right to work hunting trees. With the wood I had collected, I then made a crafting table. Using the crafting table and my leftover wood, I made myself some wooden tools, including a sword. Time to find some lunch. I went outside and soon came across a rabbit. That's going to have to do for now. I chased it down and got its meat. I might be trapped in the wilderness with no powers, but that doesn't mean I have to eat raw meat. As I took a look around, I soon came across a village. In the middle of the village was a campfire. Let's get cooking. I laid down my rabbit meat and let it sizzle. Soon, I had some cooked meat. I took a bite and was feeling much better. Suddenly, I realized what kind of village it was. It was a pillager village. Uh-oh, time to run. The pillagers chased me, but I managed to get away without losing my life. Later that evening, I took the simple supplies I had collected to start making myself a house to stay in. If those pillagers found me, at least I would have some walls to protect me. Soon, the hut was complete, and I settled in for the night. On day three, I awoke to a knock on the door. Who could that be? I opened the door and saw it was Captain America. Or well, I guess it was just Steve Rogers. He wasn't looking so good. Steve, what's wrong? You're not looking like your normal fit self. I was worried something had happened to you. I see now I was right. Your friend Iron Monger is to blame for this. I was minding my own business when he suddenly came out of nowhere. I don't know how he did it, but he managed to take away all of my powers. We might not be strong enough to help him right now, but we need to hurry and warn the others he's coming for him. That's a good point. Let's stick together while we figure this out. Steve agreed, and so we figured it would be good to start building a proper base. We did some scouting around and soon found a nice cliffside that would work perfect. I didn't have my powers, but I could still get shipments of stuff sent to me. After a bit, an express delivery with all the supplies we'd need showed up, and we got to work. Building a house on a cliff like this reminded me of my mansion in Malibu. It wasn't going to be quite like that, but I was hoping to eventually make something just as impressive. Soon, the beginning of our base was complete. Thanks for your help, Pete. We'll let you know if anything else comes up. On days four to five, Steve came over to talk. He wanted to know if I knew where any other superheroes were. Sorry, buddy, I don't. I really wish I did, though. Well, you're a pretty smart guy, right? Is there something you could invent? I thought it was a good question, but nothing came to mind. I stared at my empty crafting table when suddenly I had an idea. Oh wait, maybe that could work. I headed out to the caves to gather the materials I would need. If I could just get everything I would need, this special item would be the perfect solution to our problem. By the time I had made it into the deepest part of the cave, I had already managed to make myself some iron gear. It was about to come in handy as I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of magma cubes. All right, box heads, you're just what I was looking for. I swung my sword and managed to take a few of them out. As they disappeared, they dropped some charged coal. Once the threat was taken care of, I also found some nearby palladium, which I happily mined up. All right, that's everything I'm going to need. Let's make this special item. I soon arrived back at the house and got right to it, smelting down the palladium into ingots. I also needed a compass, which Steve gave to me. At long last, the final pieces were starting to come together. I went to the crafting table and used the palladium, charged coal, and compass to make my special item, a superhero radar. Sure hope this works. Steve and I headed into another room, and I set the radar down in the center. I placed a lever on the wall and flipped it. The radar started to make a sound, and a purple line came out of it. That line is pointing us to a nearby superhero. Now we can help them. On day six to eight, I checked the radar again to get a clear direction of where to go. I told Steve to hang back at the base and keep an eye on the radar, just in case anyone else popped up on it. Let's go see who it's gonna be. I left the base and ran off in the direction the radar had indicated. Hopefully I could get to them in time. After a bit of traveling, I soon reached a village, but it looks like the place was abandoned. Hello, is there anyone here? Thought it was you stomping around. Black Widow had come out of nowhere. Natasha, I can't believe I found you. There's no time to explain, but I need you to come with me. Listen, I don't trust anyone that much, even you. You're gonna have to give me some kind of explanation. Okay, uh, Steve is back at my base, and you see neither of us have our powers anymore, so we've gotta hurry to get out of here, or the same will happen to you. Don't have your powers? Who or what did that to you? Iron Monger! It was an answer to her question, but also an exclamation. He had popped up out of nowhere. Black Widow had sprung into action, trying to fight him off. I was still too weak, though, and had to run away. Hang in there, Natasha! They continued to fight, but it was no use. Iron Monger was too quick, and managed to hit her with a special gun. He had taken away all of her special abilities. <laughs> I don't know what you two are up to, but knock it off. Go live normal lives like the ordinary people you are. Before he could do us any more harm, we ran away. I couldn't believe he was able to do it again. On days 9 to 10, Black Widow and I arrived back at the base. We met up with Steve. Natasha, it's good to see you. Wait, did something happen? It was Iron Monger. I had gotten there in time, but he showed up and was able to steal her power. Oh no, did you see where he went? No, we had to get out of there. I hate this feeling. I've never felt so useless. It's okay. Keep your head on straight. I need some time to clear my head. I decided to get to work, building Natasha her own place to stay at the base. It was good 
to have a project to keep my mind busy. I couldn't believe I was beaten by my own friend. Soon, Natasha's room was complete. On days 11 to 12, I went to check the machine and saw there was a new signal, but this time it was different. What is it? What does it mean? Not 100% sure. It's a new invention that even I don't understand completely. Well, if it's pointing to a friendly, it's worth a shot trying to save him. Yeah, I'm not so sure, Cap. Hmm. What good are we as rescuers if we can't really rescue someone? Iron Monger is just going to show up again. You don't know that. And come on, you know there's more to this than just being the strongest. Huh. That's certainly something coming from you. I'll see what I can find. I left the base and headed in the direction the radar was pointing. As I looked around, I felt like I wasn't seeing anything. That's when I realized I was back at the place I had crashed on day one. Suddenly, I noticed something nearby on the ground. I picked it up. Jarvis, is that you? What are you doing out here, buddy? Hello, sir. I'm delighted to see you have found me. So am I. How are you? I am here, but I am damaged. I am sorry for the loss you have suffered. So am I, buddy. But hey, do you think you can help? You've got all that information from my suit stored in your memory, don't you? I do. Or rather, I believe I do. My memory banks have been damaged, but it seems plausible they can be recovered. We will need to find the correct materials in order to recover it. Sure, sure, we can do that. I built a suit once. I can surely do it again. What's on that materials list of yours? Jarvis gave me the list of what I needed, and I headed off right away. On days 13 to 15, I arrived at some caves and headed on in to gather up the materials Jarvis had mentioned. First, I gathered up a bunch of iron, which was one of the main things I would need. Then I found some titanium, which was also going to come in handy. All right, that should be everything I need from here. I then left the cave and found myself in a herd of cows. I took some of the cows out in order to get some leather. That was all the ingredients I was going to need. Time to get back to the base. On day 16 to 19, I made it back to the base and went into my garage. It was crafting time. I put the iron in the furnace and started smelting iron ingots. Then it was titanium's turn, which started smelting into titanium ingots. While the ores were smelting, I then opened a nearby chest and grabbed some glass I had. Then at the crafting table, I added the glass to some iron and palladium to make myself a new arc reactor. At last, power! With my new palladium arc reactor, I could start to put together a new suit. I grabbed the ingots I needed out of the furnace, then used iron, titanium, leather, and the arc reactor to make myself a chest plate. Oh yeah, here we go. With the chest plate finished, I then used the rest of my materials and made the leggings, boots, and of course, the helmet. This isn't the best suit I've ever made. In fact, it's just as good as the first one I built in a cave in the desert, but it'll be better than having nothing. Hey, what have we got here? Steve and Natasha had walked into the garage. You built a new suit. It's gonna be so good for you. How did you pull it off? It was with the help of Jarvis. I found him at the crash site. His memory is damaged, but he remembered enough to help me build the suit. You think that's a good idea? Do you think it's not? No, no, it's great. It's just that you said Jarvis was damaged. I'd hate to see something go wrong. I assured him that Jarvis was working well enough to help me make the suits again without putting any of us in danger. That seemed like an excuse, though. Steve was probably just jealous I was getting my powers back, and he wasn't. Before I could say anything else, though, Natasha mentioned that she and Steve had gotten more food and stored it in the kitchen. All that crafting had made me hungry. I went over there to cook up some steak. This is going to be much better than Wild Rabbit, that's for sure. When the steak was ready, I scarfed it down. Delicious! I then went and started to make some more upgrades to the base. I was a man of luxury, so I decided the house needed a swimming pool. I picked a good spot and got the thing installed. All this building has given me an idea for one more big project. I headed out and got to work building a statue. These were dark times, and there was always one thing that could be a light in the darkness. Let me know what you think I'm building. Soon, the first part was complete. On days 20 to 22, I heard a notification go off on the radar, telling me another superhero had been found. I went and told Steve and Natasha the good news. They both wanted to come with to find who it was, but I told them it might be good for just me to go, given that I was the only one who had regained any of my power. As I put my suit on, I saw my health increase to eight hearts. I was also stronger and had a flamethrower attack. It was time to help our fellow superhero. As I got closer to the place the radar was pointing me to, I saw a large tower in the middle of the forest. I knew just who I'd find inside. As I reached the top, I could see Doctor Strange was there. Steven, be on your guard. Iron Monger is running around stealing everyone's power. What? He immediately got ready to fight. It was just in time, too, as Iron Monger came flying over, firing down on us. Huh, the good doctor. I think you've got just what I'm looking for. Doctor Strange was ready, though, and he started to put up a good fight. Iron Monger was going to have a much harder fight this time. I may have spoke too soon, though, as Iron Monger managed to land a hard hit, knocking out Doctor Strange. Iron Monger lifted his weapon and started draining Doctor Strange's power. I had to do something. Oh, no, you don't. Even though I wasn't super strong, I charged in and managed to stop Iron Monger from taking all the power. Problem was, he was now focused on me. Doctor Strange was back in the fight, though, and together we put up a good fight. In the end, we managed to hurt Iron Monger enough that he backed down. This isn't the last you've seen of me. He flew off. Steven, are you okay? I still have some of my powers, but I'm definitely weaker than before. I need to go rest. Doctor Strange opened a portal and walked through it. Huh, well, that was a quick exit, but at least we could stop him from losing Losing everything, I better get back to the base and see who else we can help. On days 23 to 26, I was on my way back to the base when Jarvis piped up with some helpful information. Sir, my sensors are indicating a lot of silver 
nearby. I think that could help. Jarvis then told me what direction to go, and I headed there right away. As I arrived at the location he was sending me to, I didn't see anything. Are you sure this is the right place? There doesn't seem to be anything here. The silver may be beneath something, but I am 99% sure it is here. Well, guess I better start breaking blocks. I started breaking things as I looked around and soon saw an entrance to a dungeon. What is this all about? As I went deeper into the dungeon, I ran into a bunch of piglins. You piggies better watch out. That's when I noticed that they had all kinds of material stored down here. I hope you guys don't mind if I use some of this stuff. As I fought my way through the gang of piglins, I noticed that they dropped silver ingots. Wow. There, sir. The silver I was detecting. I happily picked the silver up and continued to fight the piglins. There were hoglins around as well, and they were a tough challenge. But I was up for the fight and soon made it to the dungeon's boss. A piglin brute with armor. You look strong, but I'm stronger. It turned out I was right. The piglin brute was really strong after all. He knocked me back, but I stayed in the fight. He wasn't going to get the better of me. After a long fight, I finally took him out. Huh, he didn't drop anything. But look, a chest. I went over to the chest, which was filled with silver. This should be more than enough. I hurried back out of the cave. On days 27 to 31, I arrived back at my base. I met back up with the team to tell them the good news. Guys, I was able to find Doctor Strange, and together we were able to fight off Iron Monger. Doctor Strange was weakened, but he was able to keep his powers. Everyone was really excited to hear the good news and couldn't believe Iron Monger had shown up again. Everyone, that is, except Steve. He kept his powers, huh? Well, uh, good for him, I guess. I didn't know why Steve wasn't excited like everyone else. He really must be jealous someone else got to keep their powers. I left the room and went to work on a new set of armor. With all the new silver I'd collected, I was going to be able to build an even better suit. I took my time making each set, and soon I had a full set of Iron Man Mark II armor. Oh yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. With my new suit on, I noticed I had more health than before. I still couldn't fly yet, but I could jump a little higher and felt stronger too. I showed it off to the gang, and everyone was really impressed. If I kept finding more materials, I would be back to full strength in no time. I had to find more materials. On days 32 to 35, I decided to see what else Jarvis could find for me. I'm thinking of adding some more weapons to the suit. What do you think it can handle? Our scan show is not strong enough to handle your repulsor cannon, but there is something else that might work. We'll have to travel far away, but I believe it will be worth it. Show me the way. Jarvis explained the way to go, and eventually we made it to an entirely new biome. All right, Jarvis, what direction? Down, sir. It looked like it was time to dig. I think I knew what he had in mind. I kept digging and digging and soon made it into a magma chamber. Let me guess, we need some lava. No, sir. We're searching for a very specific mop. It should be here. I started to explore. Could you tell me what I'm looking for? Just then, I almost ran into a monster. It was a mutant blaze. Yikes, thanks for the warning. Sorry, sir, but my sensors aren't quite as sharp down here. The mutant blaze's fire attacks were strong, but my new armor was doing its job. I was taking much less damage than I normally would have. I'm gonna put you out, Firehead. I kept on swinging and at long last defeated the Blaze. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped a Blaze Core. The Blaze Core, that is just what we need, sir. On days 36 to 39, I made it out of the hole and headed back towards the base. As I arrived back at the base, I went to the crafting area and got right to work on the new suit attachment. Using the Blaze Core, I was able to make myself a flamethrower. Oh yeah, I'm starting to heat up now. I called the others over and showed them my new toy. Whoa, that new flamethrower is so hot right now. Natasha was really excited about it, but Steve, less so. No surprise there, he was just jealous. On days 40 to 43, I heard the power detector going off again. It must have found another superhero. Maybe with my new gear, I can even defeat Iron Monger this time. I let the others know that I would head out by myself again. Until they could get their powers, it just didn't make sense to put them in harm's way. I would handle everything. I set off in search of the superhero, and soon found myself in a thick forest. Hello, is there anyone around here? I kept shouting and looking around, but couldn't find anyone. All I saw were a bunch of bats flying around. Suddenly, they attacked me. What the? Get away from me! Using my new attacks, I managed to fight off the bats, but then I was attacked by some wolves. This forest is crazy! What's going on around here? The wolves snapped their teeth and swung their claws, but I was able to keep them away and knock them out. I still don't see anyone, but it's starting to get late. I better build a shelter for the night. I soon found a nice clearing and got right to work building a shelter. After a bit, my camp was set up. Time to get some sleep. I'll keep looking in the morning. On days 44 to 49, I woke up in the middle of the night to a rumbling sound. What was that? I ran outside and saw there was a huge castle that had appeared out of nowhere. Well, nothing else to do but take a look. 
I ran into the castle and was suddenly attacked by a whole bunch of spooky mobs. There were bats and all kinds of skeleton creatures. I had to fight for my life. Back off, you undead creatures. You'll never take me alive. I kept fighting my way through the castle until finally I saw something different than the mobs. It was Blade. Blade, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I've tracked a vampire to this castle and I'm so close to finally beating him. I've come to warn you. Iron Monger is going around stealing power from superheroes. You've got to get out of here. Thanks for the warning, but I've come too far to quit. I don't see Iron Monger anywhere, so I think I have time to finish my mission. Well, let me help. Together we can get it done even faster. We soon noticed a coffin and walked up to it to take a look. We opened it, but it was a trap. Oh no, what is this? I can't move. Me either. Jarvis, clear this gas out of my suit. Jarvis got right to work, but he wasn't quick enough. Iron Monger had shown up. Huh, stay still. This won't hurt at all. Iron Monger used a special item and was able to take away Blade's powers. Jarvis had just cleared the gas from my suit, though, and I was ready to fight. I thought I told you to keep out of this. Iron Monger didn't stick around to fight me, but instead released the vampire before flying away. Without his powers, Blade was in for a real fight. Come on, Blade, I'll help you. Blade and I got to work swinging at the vampire. Even without his powers, Blade was a good fighter, getting lots of hits in. He wasn't good enough, though, and the vampire was able to really hurt him. You'll pay for that. I started attacking him even more than before and could tell I was starting to win. When he was at his weakest, Blade jumped forward and knocked him out with a stake for good. Thanks for your help. I couldn't have done this without you. Here, take this stake. You never know when it could come in handy. Thanks. I'll be sure to keep it close. I'm sorry about your powers. How about you come back to my base with me and we can figure this out? That sounds like just what I need right now. On days 50 to 53, Blade and I returned to the base. Then we met up with Natasha and told her what had happened. I'm sorry to hear it didn't work out this time. It sounds like he's getting smarter. I'm sorry too. But hey, where's Steve? Huh? Oh, he said he had some errands to run and left. He didn't tell me what those errands were. Huh, that's odd. Mm -hmm. Just then, Steve came back to the base. Sorry about that. I was just collecting some more materials to upgrade the base. I thought you could use some new materials for our new guest. That was a fair point. He was right, too. Blade needed a place to stay. Using some of the materials Steve had gathered, I was able to put together a room for Blade. Steve had also mentioned wanting a training room, so I got to work on that. Just because they had lost their powers didn't mean they couldn't stay in shape. Soon, everything was complete. On days 54 to 57, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I decided I needed to talk to Natasha in private. Hey, I wanted to ask, has Steve been acting strange to you? Now that you mention it, he has. I haven't seen him do anything strange specifically, but he doesn't seem like he's been his normal self. I usually try and let people just do their own thing. You see, the thing is, Iron Monger always seems to show up right around the same time I do. I'm not saying Steve is somehow tipping him off, but I want to be sure he's not involved. Say no more. The next time you guys go, I'll keep an eye on him. That would be strange, but we'll feel better if we can rule it out. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate it. I then reached out to Jarvis to help with the next stage of rigging up the superpower detector. If Steve was really tricking us, I needed to get the super detector to trick him. Jarvis said he knew what I needed to get, but there were some special items I needed to collect first. Let's get exploring. On days 58 to 62, Jarvis led me to a cave that was filled with spiders. I was pretty strong at this point, and these spiders were no match for me. I easily knocked them out of the way. Aha! There's the gold ore you wanted me to get. I quickly mined up all the gold I needed, then hurried back to the base. There, I crafted some special wiring out of gold and took it to the superpower detector. After I attached the new wiring, the detector started to go off. Everyone came running into the room. The detector found another super. Hang tight, guys. I'll go get them and help them out. Everyone agreed, and as I went to leave, I gave Natasha a nod to let her know the plan was on. She nodded back. I soon reached a mountaintop where the detector was pointing me to. Of course, no one was here, but I needed to put on a good show. Oh, hey, Thor. I can't believe you're here. Just then, Iron Monger popped out. Uh -huh. Huh? I was ready for him and gave him a good hit. What the? There's no Thor here. I can't believe I've been betrayed and tricked like this. What do you mean betrayed? How did you know I would be here? Uh, I've said too much. Iron Monger flew away. Something was definitely going on. I hurried back to the base. As I arrived, I could see Natasha was waiting for me. You're not gonna believe this. What happened? After you left, I followed Steve just like you asked. Once he had gotten far enough away from the base, I saw him pull out a communication device. I got close enough to hear who he was talking to. It was Iron Monger. You're right. I can't believe this. We've got to confront him right away. On days 63 to 66, I headed into the base to find Steve. I soon found him. Hey, you weren't gone for very long. Did you find anyone? There was no one there, but... You probably already knew that. What do you mean? How could I have known that? Because you've been in contact with your friend, Iron Monger. Give it up, Steve. We know. You don't know anything. Just then, Steve started to transform. Suddenly, Steve was gone, and Mandarin was standing there. Mandarin, so it's been you all along. I should have known it was someone evil trying to trick us. Well, you just aren't very smart, are you? You've been leading us to superheroes this entire time. What do you want with us? I've been absorbing all of the powers. Soon, you'll be unable to stop me. 
I was hoping I could wait for you to build another super suit so I could steal its powers too. But no matter, you'd never stop me. I leapt forward to attack him, but he was right. He was really strong. He knocked me out of the way and was able to escape. He wasn't fully powered up yet, but if he was this strong already, we were going to be in real trouble. On day 67 to 70, I went to talk to Natasha and Blade. I couldn't believe I had been tricked. I apologized to them for leading Mandarin right to them. Don't worry about it. You were trying your best. Now that we know who we're really up against, we have a better chance of stopping him. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate the support. And speaking of support, I appreciate all of you watching too. After this video, search for more Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've managed to repair my memory banks and unlocked a new design for another part of the suit. Oh, that's great news. What do we need to build it? It looks like we'll be needing some diamonds, but I'm not detecting any on my scanner. You need diamonds? I haven't seen any underground, but while I was tracking the vampire, I stayed in a village full of them. I'll tell you where to go. Blade explained where the village was, and I set off to find it. I soon arrived and saw that Blade wasn't lying. There were diamonds everywhere here. The villagers had all kinds of diamond tools and armor. Hey there, nice armor. Do you guys have any extra diamonds you could spare? I might have some, but I can't just give you them for free. That's understandable. How much do they cost? You know, we've had quite a bit of a problem here, and if you can solve that problem, I'll give you everything we can spare. Sounds like it must be a pretty big problem then. Yeah, there's a monster that has started living in our diamond mine, and we haven't been able to go in there for weeks. Take care of that monster for us, and we'll give you our spare diamonds. <sighs> okay, I'll do it. Tell me where to go. On day 71 to 74, I arrived at the diamond mine, but the place looked abandoned. I guess the monster really cleared this place out. Better see what I can find. I went into the cave, but didn't see any diamonds. I didn't see anything, for that matter. The place was super dark. As I went deeper into the mine, I placed torches to help me see. The mine kept going deeper and deeper. I was starting to wonder if it would ever end. At long last, I reached what seemed to be the final room. There's nothing here. Maybe the monster left or something. Just then, I noticed that the torches I had placed along the wall were starting to go out. One by one, they broke, getting closer and closer to me. Suddenly, the vampire from before appeared. What? I thought we defeated you. The vampire smirked and then attacked. He was even stronger than before. And this time, he had some tricks up his sleeve too. He burst into a ball of smoke, summoning a group of bats. What in the world? This is crazy. The vampire had disappeared. I had to defeat these bats. I ran around trying to cut down as many as I could. Suddenly, I felt a hit. The vampire had reappeared. Get out of here, Dracula. I still couldn't believe this guy was still around. But I guess it's true. Vampires can never really be defeated. That's when I remembered. The stake. The vampire was getting weak now, and it was time to finish him off. I grabbed my stake and hit him, finishing him off. He would be back eventually, but at least I could get my diamonds in the meantime. I hurried back into the village and met up with the villager. It's done. The monster is gone. Now let's see about those diamonds. Amazing, you saved us. Here, you can have everything we have to spare. The villager tossed out a single diamond. I gave him a look. I thought you said you were going to give me all the diamonds you have to spare. I did. We only have one diamond to spare. Jarvis piped up. That should be all we need, sir. Mm, thanks. Well, here, you guys might need this. I tossed him the stake and headed off, back to the base. On day 75 to 78, I arrived back at the base. It was time to make what Jarvis had remembered. As I went to the crafting table, Jarvis told me what I needed to do to craft a new repulsor. It wasn't my full suit, but at least it was a stronger weapon than before. Just then, Natasha came into the room. You've got your repulsor up and running? That's great. Yeah, problem is, I don't know where to go to find Iron Monger or Mandarin. Yeah, I was thinking about that. When I heard Steve, or I guess Mandarin, talking to Iron Monger, I thought I could hear some machines in the background. Blade came into the room. Machines? There's a factory not too far from here. Maybe he's hiding out in there. It's worth a shot. I'm not sure where else to look. They all agreed, and I decided that before I would leave, I would go ahead and finish the statue. It took a lot of hard work to get it done, but I soon had it all finished in no time. So what do you guys think? Did you guess what it was correctly? On day 79 to 84, I soon arrived at the factory Blade had told me about. I'm not sure if this is right, but we'll find out. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a group of zombies. If there were zombies around here, there was a good chance Ironmonger or Mandarin were around too. I managed to fight through the wave, but avoided using my repulsor. In case Ironmonger was watching, I didn't want him to know I had it. Soon, all of the zombies zombies were defeated. On days 85 to 89, I entered into the base. That's when I saw Iron Monger standing amongst a bunch of zombies trapped in cases of liquid. What are you doing? I knew you would show up here eventually. I'm doing what needs to be done. You superheroes think you can just do whatever you want. Zombies can be controlled, so I'm taking your powers and giving them to them. Then I will control all the powers on Earth. Oh, I see. You don't want to stop superpowers. You just want to be in charge of them yourself. I won't let you get away with this. Huh. You've been trying to stop me this entire time and have never beat me. 
Today, I will finish you for good. We'll see about that. Ironmonger flew up in the air as a door opened, letting zombies into the room. There were a ton of them. Uh-oh, I better take care of these first. I ran around the room, trying to take out as many zombies as I could. This was a tough fight with so many things going on at once. I had to defeat Ironmonger, though. My friends were going to need all of their powers back. Where is Mandarin hiding? You'll never find him, because you'll never leave here. Ironmonger and I were now fighting each other directly, and it was getting intense. He hadn't expected all of my upgrades, though, and I was really hurting him. How did you get so strong? I thought I took everything away from you. A suit isn't a brain, and that's what's going to defeat you. I fired my repulsor at him and took him out for good. As he disappeared, I saw he had dropped some unique parts, which I picked up. Sir, we can use these materials to remake your strongest suit. Yes, now we just need to find Mandarin and get everyone's powers back. Let's do this. On days 90 to 94, I made it back to the base. I ran right over to Natasha and Blade to tell them the good news. I was able to defeat Ironmonger. The bad news is that he was trying to inject zombies with your powers. That's horrible. It's a good thing you beat him, though. Speaking of, any way to get our powers back? Before I left, I saw you had some kind of machine that must be storing your powers. If you guys go there, you may be able to get them back. Right on. Thanks for all of your help. You've got it. Now I've got to get to work returning to my final form. I rushed over to the garage as the other set off for the factory. Using the materials Ironmonger had dropped, I got to work building my final Mark III version of my armor. After a lot of hard work, my armor was restored. Yes, it's going to feel so good to fly again. I ran up the stairs of the house and over to a balcony. Here we go. I jumped off and nothing happened. I landed in the water below. Jarvis, what's going on? Sorry, sir, but while your suit has been restored, the flying capabilities still need some repairs. Don't you think you could have told me that before I jumped off the cliff? My apologies, sir. It's okay. No harm done. Now, where do we need to go? On days 95 to 97, Jarvis instructed me that we would be heading to the nether, so I got to work building a nether portal. I hadn't been able to get a diamond pickaxe, so I had to get creative. By using lava and some water, I managed to fashion a nether portal together. It took a bit to get it all done, but soon, I had my own nether portal ready to go. All right, Jarvis, show me the way. I stepped into the portal and soon found myself in the nether. This place always gives me the creeps. Let's make this quick. There was some quartz nearby, so I quickly ran over to it and mined it up. Luckily, that was all I needed, so with my pockets full, I jumped back into the portal. Back in the garage, I got right to work, crafting the flight module. It didn't take too long, and soon, it was all complete. I walked back towards the cliff, jumped off, and it worked. Yahoo! I'm a flying man once again! I took some time flying around, feeling good that I was finally powered up. Just then, Jarvis delivered some interesting news. Sir, the superhero detector at the base is going off. The signals are off the charts. I hurried back to the base and went into the detector room. The machine was going crazy. The signal is way too strong for it to be Natasha and Blade getting their powers back. Mandarin must be up to something. It was time to take him down. On day 98, I headed off in the direction the detector was pointing. Not too much later, I saw a giant base rising out of the ground. This has to be Mandarin's base. Just then, I was attacked by a bunch of zombies. Oh no, he must be trying to do the same thing Ironmonger was. I've got to get to him, and quick. I was so strong that I knocked the zombies out of the way, no problem. But there was still a lot of them. I also couldn't help but notice some of them were strong than others. I had to hurry and get to the top. Out of the way, zombros. I kept firing my repulsor cannon until at long last, all of the zombies were defeated. I ran over to the stairs and started heading up to the top. As I got close, I passed a sign in the distance. Oh, subscribe. You should do that right now. And once this adventure is over, go look up some more of my other ones. Just search Zozo, Z-O-Z-O, -O, to find them. On day 99, I reached the top of the tower and saw Mandarin floating in the sky. Wait, how are you floating? <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? You're too late. I've absorbed your friend's powers, and now you'll never be able to defeat me. No, I don't believe it. I'm going to knock their powers out of you. Bring it on, rich boy. Mandarin started firing energy blasts at me, causing some big explosions. I returned fire, launching attacks with my repulsor cannon. I had to be careful, though. Getting caught in those explosions really hurt. The time of the superheroes is over, and the time of the supervillain has begun. I managed to get a hit in with my repulsor, which stopped his monologue. But suddenly, a bunch of yellow smoke appeared, and Mandarin was gone. Where did he go? Looking for me? Mandarin reappeared, launching more energy blasts. He could teleport now. This wasn't looking good. I had started to fly around, but this was tough. I was hanging in there, but I didn't know how long I could last. What's wrong? Am I too strong? Let me make this easier for you and finish this. There was another plume of yellow smoke, and Mandarin copied himself. I was getting attacked from all sides. Oh no, he's too strong. I was taking out some of his clones, but there was no way I could keep this up. I finally took out the clones, but took a heavy hit. One more hit, and it was all done for me. I removed my mask. I'm going to enjoy this. You have been a thorn in my side for too long. Suddenly, a portal opened, and all of my friends came running through, including Doctor Strange and Captain America. Thought I ought to pay you back. 
This guy stole my face. That's America's face, not his. We were able to get our powers back. All thanks to you. Now let's return the favor. Well, 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 aren't we all just one big happy family? Well, you're too late. I'm not just as strong as all of you. I'm stronger. Mandarin cloned himself again, and we all started to fight. It was on now. He was still strong, but there was no way he could take us all down. Because even though we might be equal in power, we had something he didn't. Friendship. No, it can't be. How can I be losing? We had defeated all of his clones and surrounded him in the center of the platform. Well, thanks for playing. Tell Ironmonger we say hello. No! I blasted him with my repulsor, destroying him for good. My friends and I all gathered together. Steve, I was wondering what had happened to you. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, the doctor here came and found me. By the time we met up with the other two, they had just gotten their powers. We came here right away. Just in time, too. Suddenly, another portal opened, and Hulk came through. Wait a second, this isn't where I was trying to go. Where's Abomination? Uh-oh, that Hulk sounds like me. Looks like me from another video somehow wound up here. Can you help him get back? After this video is over, go watch my Hulk video. On day 100, we had all arrived back at the base. The world was safe once again, and everyone had their powers. But we would stay vigilant and keep an eye out. You never know when trouble could strike again. On day one, I spawned in as the Hulk. Oh yeah, look at me, I'm incredibly tiny. I was small, but I could still punch pretty hard and jump pretty high. Before I could spend too much time admiring my abilities though, I was attacked by a bunch of baboons. Get away from me, you mad monkeys. I thought about running away, but wait, I was the Hulk. I started swinging my fists. In no time, I had pounded the baboons into the ground. Bet you thought this little green guy was an easy dinner. I decided to go looking for my friends. As I was exploring, I came across a village. While walking the streets, I noticed that it was empty and several of the buildings had been damaged. Wow, I wonder what happened here. I kept exploring but couldn't find any survivors, so I found myself a good house and went to sleep for the night. On day two, I left the village and entered a nearby forest. Time to start punching trees. I punched down trees until my fists were starting to hurt, then set up a crafting table to make myself some wooden tools. I made all the tools I was going to need, then headed over to a nearby cave. Wood can only get me so far. Better get some stone. In the cave, I managed to find some coal, along with plenty of stone. As I was mining, though, I suddenly heard a noise behind me. Ah! The little boy ran off into the cave. He had totally caught me off guard. Hang on a second, come back here. I ran off in the direction he had gone and soon caught up with him. That's when I saw a skeleton was trying to attack him. Hang tight. With my Hulk strength, I managed to take him out. Then I turned to the little boy. Please don't eat me. Eat you? Why would I eat you? So you're not going to eat me? No, of course not. I don't want to hurt anyone. What are you doing down here in this cave? A big monster came to our village and destroyed it. My mom told me to hide in this cave. The monster reminded me of you, but I guess you're not as big as he was. Like me? Huh, that's confusing. But do you think it's safe to go back to the village? I didn't want to break it to this kid that the village had been completely wiped out. So I didn't. It's still pretty scary out there, so our best bet is just to stay here in the cave. We can go look for your family tomorrow. On day three, the boy, whose name was Nash, and I headed back to the village. This was going to be awkward. Nash showed me to his house, but it was completely destroyed. He was feeling really sad when suddenly we heard a cry from the inside. Someone is in here. I ran over to a pile of rubble, and underneath I could see a pair of eyes. It's Mila. That's my big sister. I quickly cleared out all of the blocks, letting the little girl out of the rubble. Are you okay? What happened here? Uh, I think I'm okay. It was a green monster that attacked us. He was big and scary. Kind of like you, but he didn't have friendly eyes. He ran around our town, destroying everyone and everything in front of him. Our house collapsed, so I don't know if my parents escaped or not. I'm sorry to hear it. How long has it been? I don't know. Days have gone by since I've been under here. Just then, we heard a howl and a group of feral wolves appeared. They must have been scavenging in the abandoned village. Hang on, kids. I'll take care of this. I sprang into action, hitting the wolves. They were vicious as they snapped with their fangs, but I wasn't going to let them hurt these poor kids. Soon enough, I had taken several of them out. It wasn't enough, though, as I could hear some more wolves off in the distance. Come on, guys. I don't think I can fight all of them off. Let's get out of here. We ran from the village until we were a safe distance away. It was time to start building us a shelter. First off, I put together a full set of stone tools so I'd have the equipment needed to get any job done. Then I got to work building a simple house for us to stay in. It wasn't anything fancy, as we needed something quick, but at least for now, it was a place to call home. Once the house was finished, I then made several torches and put them outside to stop mobs from spawning. We had survived another day, but who knew what surprises were coming next? On days four to five, I left the kids at the house and went to go look for some food. We weren't going to last out here if we didn't have something to eat. Oh, look, pigs. I had spotted some pigs, so I rushed over and attacked them. I quickly knocked them all out and collected all of their meat. Just then, Black Panther came out of the trees. T'Challa, what are you doing out here? Diary 
is a beast that has been destroying the villages in the area. They call him Abomination. I have tried to face him myself, but he was too powerful. Oh man, if you can't beat him, how can I? I'm so small. You know, there is a cave near here that contains something I think might help you. He explained where I needed to go, and so I set off to find what he was talking about. After a bit, I soon found the cave he was describing. As I entered in, I saw what he was talking about. It was gamma radiation. This is what made the Hulk in the first place. I stepped up to it and immediately started to absorb the radiation. I could feel it entering my bloodstream when suddenly I grew bigger and stronger than before. Awesome! I feel like I could beat anything right now. Speaking of which, there was a roar as a Zoglin had just shown up. He must have been absorbing the radiation too. Let's try these new powers out. But much to my disappointment, he was really strong. I was losing the fight. I was taking too much damage and had no choice but to hurry and run away. On day 6 to 8, I had arrived back at the house. That's when I realized I had eaten all the meat I was supposed to bring home. Oh man, the kids are probably hungry. I turned around and headed back out. Luckily, it didn't take too long, and I quickly found some chickens. This will make a great meal for the kids. I then headed into a nearby mine to try and find some better materials. As I went deeper into the mine, I soon came across some iron. Yes, now I can finally stop using these stone tools. With my pockets full of iron, I headed back to the house for good this time. As I entered the house, the kids were really impressed with how much bigger I had gotten. Unfortunately, they were less impressed with eating raw meat. That's a good point. Let me fix that. I got right to work adding on a kitchen to the house. I'm not sure why I thought feeding them raw meat would be a good idea. I guess I'm just used to being able to eat whatever I want. With the kitchen complete, I got the chicken all cooked up. Now the kids would be able to have a decent meal. With the food all sorted out, I then started smelting down the iron ore. Using my new iron bars, I made myself a brand spanking new set of iron tools, which would be way better than my stone ones. Then I got to it, making some iron armor. I wasn't able to make a full set. I wasn't sure it would be strong enough to take on abomination, but it would be better than nothing. That's when I realized that none of us had a place to sleep. I then made the kids their own bedrooms, complete with beds in their favorite colors. On days 9 to 10, I woke up to a knock on the door. It was Black Panther. How are you feeling about your powers now? Abomination is nearby. Perhaps together we can defeat it. Yeah, together I'm sure we'll have a chance. I followed Black Panther out and across the land. We soon arrived at a seaside village. I could see Abomination rampaging through the town, destroying people and buildings alike. Oh man, he's bigger than I thought he would be. This isn't going to be an easy fight. We couldn't let him to continue to hurt these innocent people though, so I charged down into the village, straight at Abomination. Abomination. Leave these people alone. Abomination turned and hit me. Hard. Ouch. Yeah, I don't care how much you hurt me. I'll never stop fighting you. Get out of here, you lab experiment. I don't have time for pests like you. I kept fighting, but it was clear I didn't have a chance. Just as Abomination was ready to finish me off, Black Panther hopped into the fight. He was able to get a few hits in, but it wasn't enough to stop Abomination. He was just too strong. The two of us ran off as Abomination continued his rampage through the village. We had both nearly been defeated, and T'Challa was nearly on the verge of death. Luckily, we made it out of there alive. On days 11 to 12, we arrived back at my base. T'Challa, let me make a room for you to heal up. I quickly got to work, making him a fresh new room so he could relax and get his health back up. I soon finished the build, and T'Challa was able to move in. The kids had run in to see him and were very excited. Apparently, they thought he was their new kitty. T'Challa was not amused. Hang out here, guys. I'll see about getting us some food. I started to leave the house, eating our last bit of meat. In the distance, I could hear some spiders. I better take those out before they get too close to the base. I soon came upon the spiders and managed to fight them off without too much trouble. As I picked up the string they dropped, it gave me an idea. If I had some leads, I could get some pigs and raise them at the house. Luckily, I soon came across some slime. I fought the slime, destroying all of its parts. I picked up the slime balls they dropped and then used the ingredients to craft some leads. Time to go pig wrestling. I went searching through the woods and eventually found the pigs I was looking for. Using the newly created leads, I led them back to the base. I then led them into a pen that I had built earlier. Finally, now there will be enough meat for everyone. I wanted to be sure we had some variety though, so I brought some grass to get seeds. I'd also gathered some water in a bucket, so I was all ready to build a farm. I tilled the ground and placed the water, which then let me plant the seeds I had collected. This base is really starting to come along. The only thing I was missing at this point was a statue to really put my mark on the place. Since I was so busy with food, I thought I would make it my favorite food. You'll have to let me know if you can guess what it is. Once I had finished the first part, it had gotten pretty late, and I could see some creepers had started spawning near the base. I better take care of that before they blow everyone to bits. I headed down to the base and knocked out all the creepers. Fighting them was always scary business, but I managed to knock them all out without too much trouble. On days 13 to 15, I decided that I needed to focus on getting more powerful, but I wasn't sure where to start. Just then, there was a knock on the door. Tony, what are you doing here? I was flying over and saw the statue you were building. Who else would build that other than you? Figured I'd stop in and say hello. Boy, Tony, you really dropped in at the right time. This abomination has been rampaging through the towns here, and I'm not strong enough to stop him. Oh, well, I know what you mean. I've had a few scrapes of my own I wasn't sure I was going to get out of. What have you got so far? Well, I came across some gamma radiation that powered me up, but that's about it. Well, what are you wasting your time with? me for? That's your answer right there. Surely there's more radiation points out there. You think so? But how could we find them? 
bring me some dirt from the cave. With that, I can build you a detector that will lead you to new deposits. Piece of cake. I agreed to the plan, but there is just one problem. That Zoglin would still be there. I decided to head back to the caves in order to get some more iron. With the new iron I collected, I brought it back up and smelted it down. Using the iron ingots, I completed the rest of my armor. All right, let's give this thing a go. I soon reached the cave from before. I think my best bet is going to be trying to sneak. I tiptoed into the cave and saw the perfect block for a dirt sample. I quickly mined it up without any movement by the Zoglin. Looks like I might just make it out of here alive. Just then, I noticed there were some diamonds nearby. It was too good to pass up. I headed over to the diamond and mined it out, but unfortunately, it woke up the Zoglin. Oh boy, here we go. The Zoglin let out a roar and attacked. I was the same level of strength as last time, but I didn't have this much armor back then. The Zoglin was still incredibly powerful, and it was a tough fight. And thanks to my new gear, I was able to take him out and win. On days 16 to 19, I managed to make it back to the base with a sample. Tony needed a lab to work out of and had gotten to work putting it all together. There was some pretty cool stuff going on in there, and after a while, it was all done. Wow, this lab is looking awesome. With the lab complete, Tony could start working on that radiation detector. I could tell he was going to be here for a while, though, so I got to work building him a house of his own. It probably wasn't the mansion he was used to, but he would just have to get used to it. As I was finishing the house, Tony came running over to me. He had finished the radiation detector. Ah, oh, Tony, this is gonna help so much. Thank you. It was time to get out there and become even more powerful. On days 20 to 22, I had the detector in my hand and started running off through the woods. As I ran, I almost ran straight into a woodland mansion. Huh, the gamma must be underneath this mansion. I'll have to keep my guard up though. This place is dangerous. I walked into the mansion and took a look around. As I walked down the hallways, I was immediately attacked by illagers. Don't mind me, it's just a casual breaking and entering. The illagers started firing off their arrows and I ran around giving them the old one too. It was tough, but luckily my iron armor was doing enough to protect me. I kept pushing my way through, fighting the illagers off as I went. Eventually, I saw a chest room and started taking a look inside. Oh wow, these materials will be perfect for my statue. What luck. I checked more chests and found even more materials in the chest. As I passed around the room, I saw something floating on a pedestal. Power gloves. I'll bet I can punch super hard now. I kept following the tracker and came across some more illagers. Using my new power glove, I was able to knock them out much faster than before. Boy, am I glad I found this thing. As I continued down the hallway, I soon saw a very strange looking set of stairs. This must be the place. As I reached the bottom, I saw a massive warped mosquito. Uh, hi, wanna move? Suddenly, the mosquito took flight and charged. This dude had clearly been hitting the gym and his punches were powerful. I had to do a lot of running and hiding to try and stay in the fight. Oh, mosquitoes were already bad enough. Why is this one so much worse? In addition to his punches, he also shot a gross looking liquid at me. I had to end this and fast. Using the plants as cover, I managed to jump out and get hits in. It took a lot of effort, but eventually I was able to take him out. Now that is how you squish a bug. With the mosquito gone, I headed into the doorway and could see the gamma inside. I stood in place as I absorbed its energy. Suddenly I got a little bigger and gained more hearts. Yes, this will never get old. As I was getting ready to leave the mansion, I caught the scent of a nearby farm, but it was inside. I went down the hallway and saw a room full of carrots. Well, the illagers aren't going to be needing this anymore. I gathered up as many carrots as I could. Now we'd have a more reliable food source. Time to get back to the base. On days 23 to 26, I got right to work planting all the crops I had gotten from the illagers. As I was finishing, I heard Black Panther calling to me. Well, we don't have more radiation for you. Perhaps we can train you to get you stronger. Well, I'm sure every little bit will help. I'm in. I headed out behind the house and got to work building a new training course according to T'Challa's instructions. It was looking like it would be a fun course, but certainly challenging. Once the course was complete, T'Challa ran through it to show me how it's done. He made it look really easy. All right, I'll give it a go. I did my best to run through, but definitely made some mistakes. This was going to take some practice to get better. After giving it a few tries, T'Challa suggested that we try fighting. I hope you've got your armor on tight. I'm gonna smash you. Good luck. We faced off and started to fight. I was really strong, but I think that was my mistake. The Black Panther was an experienced fighter and was able to get more hits in. In the end, he was able to defeat me. Aw oh, man, looks like I've got a lot of work to do. Do not worry. Even the smallest seeds can become a mighty tree. You will get there. On days 27 to 31, I was feeling especially motivated to get stronger. I decided to start looking for some more radiation stations. Okay, let's see where this thing leads me this time. I followed the radiation detector across the land and eventually reached a snowy tundra. It looks like it's pointing me to this cave over here. I didn't see any green glowing, but maybe it was just deep within. I headed deeper into the cave. Suddenly, I was attacked by a bunch of diamond zombies. Leave me alone! I was able to beat them back, but they were much tougher than I thought. I needed that radiation boost more than I realized. I kept going and ran into a whole group of diamond skeletons too. Luckily, some of them shot each other, so they ended up fighting amongst themselves while I took them out. Guess that's what happens when you don't have a brain. The good news was that I was able to spot some diamonds, which I happily mined out. Well, this doesn't make me stronger physically, but it will definitely give me a leg up in a fight. With all the diamonds 
Raven's mind, I headed back up out of the cave. Before I could get too far, though, I heard a noise behind me. It was a Yeti. Uh-oh, these guys are strong. The Yeti and I started to fight. I was right. His blows were landing some hard hits. I wasn't sure I could take him, but I had to be strong. I couldn't leave those kids behind. I rose up and started landing blows. I could tell I was going to win. I only needed to land one more hit when suddenly the Yeti let out an ice attack, freezing me in place. He was hurt and ran away to go heal. This is not good. On days 32 to 35, I was still frozen. Luckily, the ice was starting to melt, and I was able to break free. Well, it's a good thing that Yeti left. Now, where was I? I followed my radiation detector, which soon led me to another cave. But look who it was. That Yeti. I know I can beat him, but he's probably just going to freeze me again. But I need that power. I moved closer to him, but before I could start to fight, he spoke. Wait, wait, don't hurt me. I thought you were the abomination. I can see that you're different, though. I try to be. What do you know about him? Not much, other than he destroyed my village. Everyone I know was lost in the battle, and I'm the only one of my kind left. What a monster. Why do you think he attacked your village? Well, my village was near a gamma radiation source like the one in this cave. My best guess is that he was trying to get to it. Oh no, it must power him up too. I've got to get to the radiation before he does. He has to be stopped. I've been watching this cave to try and stop him in case he shows up, but I trust you to stop him. I'll let you in, but be warned, there's a monster even more powerful inside. I'll take my chances. I headed into the cave. Soon, I saw what the Yeti had been talking about. Inside, there was a ghost mage. Uh-oh, here we go. The ghost mage charged at me. He wasn't going to make this easy. He looked like he had been waiting here a little too long. I'd be upset too if I didn't have any legs. But hey, at least he could levitate. Get out of my way. I swung as hard as I could, and at long last, the ghost mage was defeated. Now I could finally access the radiation. I stepped up to it and could feel the power enter into me. Soon, I was even stronger than before. Oh yeah, that that's the good stuff. As I left the cave, I invited the Yeti to come and stay with us. Since his village was destroyed and he no longer had a reason to guard the cave, he happily agreed. On days 36 to 39, I got right to work building the Yeti his own room. Turned out he used to live in a world full of monsters where he would help in their mailroom. He said he got banished to our world. It was all politics. Poor guy. With the Yeti's room complete, I decided to give the base some more upgrades to make it a little safer. We needed to beef up our defenses, just in case Abomination ever found us. Once the defenses were all completed, I was starting to get hungry. That's when I headed over to continue work on my staff. You. By this point, you've probably got a good idea of what my favorite food is. Leave your guesses in the comments. After a bit, I had finished the second part. That's when Black Panther came running up to me. He said he was impressed by how much bigger I had gotten. He said there was still a lot more work I had to do, though, and invited me to do the obstacle course again. I would, but I'm just not very good at it. It's hard to do an obstacle course when there are so many other things I'm trying to get done. I understand, but it will help you. If you can complete the course, I have an item I believe will help. Oh, I like the sound of that. I'll have to keep training then. I ran over to the obstacle course and got to work. It was still hard, but I felt like I was doing even better than before. Black Panther encouraged me, even when I fell off and had to try again. I wasn't able to beat it today, but soon enough, I would have to win that prize. On days 40 to 43, I tried to use my radiation detector to find more gamma, but it wasn't working. Oh man, what's up with this thing? I headed over to Tony and asked him what was going on with it. He explained that I must have found all the gamma radiation within range of the detector. So how can we expand the range? Tony told me to wait there and headed into his plane. When he returned, he tossed out some eyes of ender and told me I needed to get some ender pearls. Oh boy, this isn't gonna be easy. I thanked him for his help and started searching for the end portal. My journey led me across the land. At one point, I even came across some diamonds, which I was able to use to finish up an entire set of diamond armor. I'm going to need this in the end for sure. It took a lot of searching, but eventually I made it into the stronghold and soon found myself outside the end portal. I inserted the eyes of Ender. Well, here goes nothing. I jumped in. On days 44 to 49, I appeared in the end. Let's get those Ender Pearls. There were several Endermen nearby, and I got right to work chopping them down. These guys were really scary when you looked them in the eyes, but you just had to be brave. I ended up getting into more than I asked for, though, and was soon surrounded by them. How was I going to get out of this one? Suddenly, there was a sound above me, and the Scarlet Witch came flying in to help. Together, we were able to take out the rest of the Endermen. Oh, you showed up just in time. I thought I was a goner. Always happy to help a friend. Do you know what's going on with the Endermen, though? I noticed that not a single one of them dropped any Ender Pearls. I have noticed this as well, yes. There is something going on, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, let's stick together and maybe we can figure this out. She agreed and we continued on through the end. Nearby, there was an End City, so we went to check it out. As we got closer, we saw something terrifying. Look at that Enderman. He's bigger than all of the others. We charged in and started to fight. This Enderman was unlike anything I had ever seen before. He had four arms and would clap them together, trying to smash me in them. 
He would also pick up and throw blocks at me, as well as teleport around. This battle was really tough. With the Scarlet Witch's help, though, we finally managed to take him out. He let out a shriek and exploded in a display of Enderman goop. It was pretty intense. And look, an Ender Pearl. The giant Enderman had left a single pearl behind. The Scarlet Witch told me I should take it, as she had more research she wanted to do in the end. She opened up a portal for me to return to the overworld, so I stepped in to head home. On days 50 to 53, I arrived back at my base. Safely back home, I went over to Tony to give him the Ender Pearl I had collected. He thanked me and got right to work, improving the gamma radiation detector. Suddenly, there was a sound outside. What was that? As I got closer to the sound of the noise, I saw that some Endermen were there. Scarlet Witch must have left the portal open too long. I hurried to defend the base from the Endermen, knocking them out one at a time. Once they were defeated, Scarlet Witch came through the portal. Oh, I am sorry about that. I have been in the end for so long, I forgot to close my portal. That's okay. Good luck with your research. She thanked me and headed back into the end. On days 54 to 57, I decided to go find Black Panther to do some training. What I found instead, though, was a note. Meet me in the woods north. Huh, I wonder what he's up to this time. I went north and soon found Black Panther, as well as a giant circle of stones. What's this all about? Pay attention. This circle will summon a mystical monster. Defeat it, and you will receive a special item. I stepped into the ring, and soon a magma monster appeared. He didn't seem like he was too tough, and that's because he wasn't. I jumped around and managed to take him out pretty easily. Is that all you wanted me to do? That was easy. Turn around. I turned around and saw a much bigger magma monster. Uh-oh. This guy was way stronger than the other one, and I was taking a beating. Why didn't T'Challa just have me fight this guy the first time? I felt like my training was paying off, though, and soon I was winning. I got into position and managed to land the final blow, taking him out completely. Got him. All right, now where's that special reward? Or is there another monster behind me? Black Panther chuckled, and suddenly a ring of fire appeared in the arena. I stepped into it and picked up an enchanted pair of diamond boots. Wow, these have Feather Falling 4 on them. Now I can survive huge falls. I thanked T'Challa for his help, then left to go back to the base. On days 58 to 62, I was arriving back at the base when I saw someone standing on top of it. Who is that? As I got closer, I could see it was the Red Hulk. Hey, what do you think you're doing here? The Abomination knows what you're doing. There's only enough room for one big green guy in this world, and that's not you. We'll see about that. We charged into the base, but were suddenly attacked by a group of red crabs. What the? Where did all of these guys come from? The crabs weren't very strong, but there were a lot of them. We were so distracted by the crabs, we didn't notice Red Hulk had snuck around the walls and into Tony lab. We soon defeated all of the crabs, but there was one question on our minds. Where did Red Hulk go? We ran around the base and soon saw the house he had run into. He had managed to break into the lab. Tony quickly ran around to check if anything was stolen. Bad news, big guy. The gamma radiation detector is gone. Oh no, now Abomination will be able to find all the sources before me. There's no way I'll be able to beat him without it. Suddenly, I realized something else was missing too. The kids! We ran around the base and eventually saw them hiding under a desk. They were scared, but unharmed. It's okay, guys. It's safe now. Don't worry. I promise I will always Always protect you no matter what. Now that everyone is safe, follow me. I can use my tracking abilities to find where the Red Hulk ran to. Let's go! On days 63 to 66, Black Panther and I were tracking Red Hulk's path. Soon, I could see a large tower in the distance. That must be it. Hang back and I'll go take care of this. I made my way over to the tower and entered in. I was immediately attacked by a bunch of red crabs. Get your pincy pincers away from me! I managed to clear out all the crabs on the ground floor and started running up the stairs. What a weird place to call home. As I reached the top, I saw Red Hulk was waiting for me. Huh, I guess I I should have gotten rid of that little cat man. But no matter, you'll never defeat me. Bring it on. Red Hulk and I charged at each other, exchanging blows. It was a different fight entirely to be punching someone who was just as strong as me. You should be helping us. You are a Hulk after all. Big deal. I'm here for the strongest, and that's never going to be you. His hits were getting harder, and I was almost out of health. Suddenly, there was a flash of light, and Scarlet Witch appeared. Someone needs to be taught a lesson. Scarlet Witch started firing energy at Red Hulk, which had totally caught him off guard. We were winning! We may have been too confident, though, because even though Scarlet Witch could fly, she got a little too close. Gotcha! Red Hulk landed a hit, knocking her out of the sky, down toward the ground. No! You'll pay for that! My blood began to boil, and I suddenly grew in size, becoming even stronger than before. I charged at the Red Hulk, smacking him again and again. He tried to fight back, but it was no use. Soon, he was defeated. I can't believe Scarlet Witch had to die. I'll never forget her. On the ground was the Gamma radiation detector, which I happily picked up. I ran back down and out of the tower. Waiting on the other side was Black Panther and Scarlet Witch. What? I thought you were gone. What do you mean? I thought you knew I could fly. You knocked me down, but I caught myself. It seemed like you had it from there. Right, that makes sense. Well, I got stronger. Let's go. On day 67 to 70, we returned back to my base and got right to work building a place for the Scarlet Witch to stay. I was so happy to find out she survived the fight. That was way too close for comfort. I soon finished her place. Then I went on to build something for the kids. I couldn't believe Red Hulk 
Hulk was able to get into our base so easily. No wonder the kids were scared. If it had been the Abomination, things could have gone much worse. Soon, I finished building them their very own playroom. My armor had taken a beating in the fight, so I went over to Tony to give him supplies to fix it up. He was happy to help, so I set off to work on the statue. I then headed outside to finish up the next part of the statue. I'm sure you've guessed what it is by now. A hamburger. It's definitely one of my favorite foods. What's yours? Soon, the next part of my burger was complete. On day 71 to 74, I was having a horrible dream. I'd finally found Abomination, but something was wrong. He kept getting bigger and bigger, while I kept getting smaller and smaller. I wasn't going to be able to beat him. I woke up in a cold sweat. Oh, what's going on, kids? Sorry to wake you up, but we wanted to tell you thank you. Yeah, even though the base was attacked, we've never felt safer. We know you'll always do what you can to protect us. I assured them that that would always be true. I believed myself when I said it, but I couldn't help but feel nervous about the fight ahead. On day 75 to 78, I felt more motivated than ever to get stronger in order to protect my friends. Alright, let's see where a boosted detector takes me this time. I followed the arrow and soon found myself back in the forest where I had been training with Black Panther. It led me to the summoning circle, which suddenly transported me to the nether. Whoa! Whoa! As I arrived, I saw tons of Maga monsters who attacked. Jeez, all my friends really need to work on their portal management skills. These guys could have come through. I kept fighting and was able to get through the magma monsters. That's when I noticed there was some ancient debris nearby. Oh, excellent. I'll be able to upgrade my armor and tools to netherite with this. On days 79 to 84, I was still following my detector through the nether. I could tell I was close. But before I could go much farther, Abomination came out of nowhere. Well, thanks for being my guide. Looks like this is my stop. Your guide? What? Huh, all that muscle and so dumb. Didn't even realize I was following you this whole time. With this radiation, I'll finally be in my full form. No! I charged at him, but even without his final form, he knocked me out of the way, no problem. I was in big trouble. He took off and went into the volcano. All I could do was watch as the volcano started to erupt. What did he do? Suddenly, a giant abomination came leaping from the volcano and landing right in front of me. Now I am truly powered up. Your little adventure ends here. I knew I didn't stand a chance in this fight, so all I could do is run. I turned as abomination started chasing me through the nether. I had no idea if I was going to get away. Come back here, weakling. I'm going to crush you. I ran and ran, but suddenly I came to a giant giant cliff. Time to say goodbye. Goodbye. I jumped. On days 85 to 89, I was still falling. After what felt like forever, I landed in a pool of water. In a jungle? How in the world did I get here? Suddenly, a crocodile came out of nowhere and attacked. It was just a few punches, and I took him out in no time. It felt good to be able to be on the winning end of a fight again. Alright, where am I? I've got to get back to the base. I took a look at the surrounding area and realized I wasn't far from my base. But thankfully, Abomination didn't follow me. I should be home in no time. As I arrived back at my base, I went to talk to Tony to tell him everything that had happened. So, yeah, now I don't know how I'll be able to beat him. Well, there might be one more gamma spot you could use. I didn't mention it before because it's pretty hard to get to. Where do I need to go? I'll do whatever it takes. It's deep inside of the earth. Give me some time to improve the detector, and I'll be able to lead you right to it. There wasn't a whole lot for me to do but wait, so I decided to use the time to finish the hamburger statue. I know it was kind of a strange thing to build, but there was something about a giant hamburger that just gave me a sense of normalcy in this crazy world. Soon, the statue was complete. On days 90 to 94, I went to visit Black Panther. All right, T'Challa, today's the day. I'm going to beat your obstacle course. You are already strong enough, my friend. You don't need to prove anything on the obstacle course. I have to prove it to myself. Besides, I want to win that item you mentioned. Ah, yes, the item. Go on, then. I ran to the course and got right to it. I could get all the strength and muscle in the world, but if I couldn't triumph a test of will, what good was it? The obstacle course was still as hard as ever, but my friends believed in me, and I had to win. Before I knew it, I had beaten the course. Yes, I did it! Well done, well done. Here is your prize, as promised. Black Panther tossed out a hammer. Is that Mjolnir? Thor's hammer? I picked it up. Wait, I picked it up. Uh, it's just a replica. I may have made it sound cooler than it was going to be. Sorry about that. That's uh, okay. I actually really like it. It reminds me of my friend. If only he could be here too. That's when I had an idea. I headed over to the hamburger statue and started to make some adjustments. I decided to add a helmet and some arms. It wasn't my friend, but I was happy to have a reminder of him. I was admiring my statue when suddenly Thor appeared. Thor, what are you doing here? Well, I'm not really there. I'm just kind of there. But the real question is, why did you make me a hamburger? It's a long, uh, hungry story. Don't worry about it. Sure, sure. Say, we do sound a lot alike, don't we? Well, that's because I spent 100 days as you before. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Everyone should go watch that video next. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, good luck on your upcoming fight. I know you'll smash it. <laughs> nice. You're always so funny. Talk to you soon. Thor disappeared. Time to go check on that new detector. On days 95 to 97, I went to Tony's to see
see if he had finished the detector. As I entered, it looked like something was wrong. Tony, what's going on? Tony was floating in a water tank on life support. I took a look around and saw a note lying on the table. What was going on? Only thing that could give the detector enough juice was my arc reactor. I will hang out here till then. Huh, he's risking his life for me to find this. I can't let him down. Before I could leave though, I had to go say goodbye to the kids. They thanked me for giving them a safe place to live and wished me luck in my battle against the abomination. As a final gesture, they gave me a piece of jewelry to remember them by. Now there's just one thing left to do. Using all of the ancient debris I had collected in the nether, I managed to make some netherite scraps. Then I used that to make some netherite ingots. Finally, I was able to upgrade all of my equipment to netherite. On day 98, I had reached the Badlands. The detector had been steady so far, so I knew I had to be getting close. Okay, it looks like this is the spot. Man, how deep do I need to go? Just then, there was a giant scary bug, and he looked hungry. Buzz off, bug boy. The bug was a vicious little, well, big, spider. I had never met something so determined to end me. The only way a bug could be this big has to be because of the radiation. I kept swinging my fist and was eventually able to knock him out. All right, let's level up for the last time. I stepped up to the radiation and nothing happened. What's going on? I'm not absorbing the radiation. That's when I realized I never was absorbing radiation to get bigger. Every time I had gotten bigger, it was because I was angry about a friend being in danger. I took a look at the locket the kids had given me. Inside of the locket was a picture of the kids with their now missing parents. The abomination has taken so much away from everyone I care about. I have to be stronger. I was so angry about it that I started to feel the power flowing into me and I was about to grow bigger than ever before. On day 99, it came bursting from the ground in my final giant form. And look how many hearts I have. Time to find the abomination. That's when I noticed that the detector could find other gamma radiation users. Man, Tony thought of everything. I flicked the switch and saw it was pointing at me. Wait, that's not right. I flicked it again and it pointed another direction. Oh no, it's pointing to my base. I took off running. My friends were going to be in trouble. Back at the base, there was an explosion outside the walls. The kids hurried and ran under the desk for cover. Here he comes, Wanda. Get ready. Abomination came breaking through the wall as Scarlet Witch and Black Panther tried to hold him off. They were doing their best, but he was too strong. As I got closer to the base, I could see the fight was intense. I hurried and jumped in. Nice of you to join us. Couldn't let you guys have all the fun. How about you two shut it and let me pound you into the ground? We'll see about that. We continued to fight as the abomination exploded more and more of the base. We had to win, but he was too strong. He kept knocking us back. Suddenly there was an explosion and the side of the children's room exploded. Ah, help! Oh, now you've got me really angry. And you won't you like me when I'm angry. angry. A surge of energy came into me and I grew even bigger than I thought was possible. Hulk smash! I started swinging, punching the heck out of the abomination. What? How? Where did this come from? The abomination was really backing down now. I punched and punched. Then at long last, he was defeated. Goodbye for good. We took a moment to celebrate our victory. But wait, what about the children? We rushed over to the house and found the kids under the desk. Oh, thank goodness you're okay. They laughed and cried out of happiness. They gave me a hug and I started to calm down. As I calmed down, I shrunk back to a more normal size. The danger was gone. On day 100, we took time to rebuild the base. The danger was gone, but who knows when it would strike again. But when it did, we would be waiting, and we would be ready. On day one, I spawned in as Lava Spider-Man in the middle of the Black Forest. Whoa, Lava Spider-Man, what a combination. What will they think of next? But I didn't get to enjoy being the world's hottest web spinner for long, because suddenly, some Endermen were emerging out of the woods around me. Uh oh I think I'm gonna leave you guys to it. I turned and ran off as fast as I could until I couldn't see the Endermen anymore. They blended in well with the dark trees of the Black Forest. I'm only a baby lava Spider-Man with 10 hearts and no weapons. I can't take on a whole gang of Endermen like this. But I hadn't accounted for one thing. Endermen can teleport. One of them popped up right in front of me, stopping me in my tracks. Why are you running from us, little one? Do you have something to hide? What? No, I don't have anything to hide. I was just running because you guys were scary. No offense. Sorry, kid, but I don't buy that. You're going to need to come with us. Our master is going to want to speak to you. I thought about running again or trying to fight, but then I turned and saw that even more of the Endermen had appeared behind me. There was no way I could get out. On day two, one of the Endermen took me to some kind of strange fort deep in the Black Forest. I had no idea who these Endermen worked for or what they planned to do with me. If you just play ball with us, kid, then no harm will come to you. There are just a few things we need to figure out. Somehow, I didn't believe him. He threw me into some kind of prison cell with tall walls and no ceiling, just staring off into the sky. That's when I noticed a back door. Don't bother trying to open that. I turned and saw a cartographer standing in the corner, watching me. I've tried. It can only be opened from the other side. 
I've been here for a week, so I think we're gonna be here in the long run. So they got you too, huh? I'm Zozo. They captured me outside. What are you in for? They captured me while mapping out the area. I'm a cartographer. That means I make maps. But they accused me of working for some suspicious person and locked me up. Believe me, I've tried every way to escape. It's impossible. Hmm. Or maybe not. Going on a hunt, I walked over to one of the walls and started to climb up it, like a spider. This must have been one of my awesome lava Spider-Man powers. Look at me go. I climbed all the way up the wall and hopped up onto the other side. Then I opened the door from the other side, freeing the cartographer. That was amazing, Zozo. You're like a superhero. Oh, geez, that's nice of you to say. But we should probably get out of here before those weird Endermen come back and try to capture us again. Good idea. We'll split up, and I hope to see you again someday, Zozo. Likewise. Stay safe out there. So I ran off, trying to make my way out of the sinister Black Forest. On day three, I escaped the Black Forest and reached the Badlands, which was as scorching hot and unforgiving as the name suggests. Wow, thank goodness I'm a lava Spider-Man, or I'd be roasting right now. But it wasn't just the heat that was a problem, it was hunger. You can't just run away from a bunch of sinister, mysterious Endermen without working up an appetite. And there aren't that many trees around here either, so I guess apples are out of the question too. But I wasn't out of luck just yet. I managed to find some delicious, healthy carrots nearby and pick them up for a quick snack. I may be a Spider-Man, but I'll take some nice carrots over flies any day. After eating the carrots and filling up my hunger bar, I continued exploring the Badlands until I ran into something spectacular. A huge, tough diamond golem. Hey there, little dude. Pick your job off the floor. You may be looking at the ultimate blinged out golem, but don't worry, I'm actually very approachable. Sorry, I, I don't mean to stare, it's just, wow, you're so shiny. Oh yeah, you better believe it. You know what they say, diamonds are forever, and so am I, no matter what these goofy, unshiny Endermen say. Wait, the Endermen are after you too? I literally just escaped from those guys. Is that so, little bro? And I think we have a lot to say to each other. Follow me, my pod isn't far from here. I'd made another friend. I eagerly followed the diamond golem through the Badlands, excited for whatever would come next. From day four to day five, I continued with the diamond golem over to his pad. It was the coolest base I'd ever seen. The exact kind of thing you'd expect from a blinged out super golem. Wow, this place is amazing, diamond golem. I'm so impressed. Please, kid, call me Dino. And your name? I'm Zozo, Zozo the Lava Spider-Man. That's a mouthful, little Zozo, but I can dig it. What you're lacking in riz, you can make up for in guts. I like that. Let me guess, people have called you a superhero? Wow, that was a good guess. I have a talent for reading people. You just look like a hero, man. There are some dangerous people out there. Not every golem is as nice and cool as me. I need your help to take care of the people out there giving me a bad name. Can you dig it? You think you're tough enough? I can dig it, and I definitely think I'm tough enough. I'll help you defeat all the bad guys. Right on, little Zozo. First, though, you can't hang out here. You're harsh in my vibe. Take these tools and go build your own place. Get it? Yes, sir. Dino the Diamond Golem gave me a stone sword and a stone pickaxe, and I left to make a base of my own. That's how I ended up in the Amaranth Fields. Yeah, this is a much nicer climate. I immediately started cutting down trees and mining stone until I had enough material to start building a base. It wasn't anywhere near as cool as Dino's base, but if I worked hard, maybe someday it would be. But the physical exercise was worth it anyway, because I suddenly leveled up, getting bigger, stronger, suddenly having 20 hearts, and gaining a new power, Web Blast! Oh yeah, now I'm like a real Spider-Man! And that new power couldn't have come at a better time. One of the same Endermen from earlier teleported in front of me. You, I've been searching for you all day since you escaped our base. I knew you were trouble. Oh, you have no idea. Unlike them, I wasn't taking prisoners. I fired web blast after web blast until the Enderman was no more. When I level up enough, I'm gonna be every bit as strong as Dino the Diamond Golem. From day six to day eight, I continued working on my base, making it a little bigger by adding a new building. And once I'd done that, I could start making it look as cool as Dino's base. During my lunch break, I saw a familiar figure walking through the Amaranth Fields. It was the cartographer who'd been in the prison with me. Of course, I immediately ran over to have a chat with my old cellmate. Hey, buddy, how's the free life treating you? 
Hi, Zozo. I wish I could say it was shaking out well, but it's honestly been pretty tough. Oh no, why? My boss, an iron golem, was meant to give me instructions on what maps to make next. But when I got to his house, it was destroyed and he was gone. It feels like something suspicious has happened. Maybe someone is going after golems. That's worrying. Take care of yourself out there, cartographer. I'm gonna go tell Dino the diamond golem. If someone is going after golems, he needs to know. And being true to my word, I immediately left to go visit Dino and warn him about the potential threat. Hmm, wish I could say I was surprised, but it ain't easy being a golem. Here's the thing though, us golems are tough. We're not easy to take out. If someone is going after golems, there's a good chance they're a vengeful golem themselves. Do we have any leads on who it can be? I've heard rumors of an obsidian golem operating in the North Badlands. Go look into that and report back to me. Of course, Dino. I'll get on it. And so I left in search of the obsidian golem, who was potentially behind the golem disappearances. From day 9 to day 10, I traveled north, braving the harsh conditions of the Badlands, knowing how important my mission was. But why would the obsidian golem go after his own kind like that? It doesn't make sense. As a budding superhero, I know that nobody commits a crime without having some kind of motive. But while I was mulling over the mystery I'd been sent to solve, the obsidian golem got the jump on me, literally jumping out right in front of me. Uh -huh. I knew someone was following me. You think because I'm a golem, I'm dumb? Big mistake, bucko. And unless you have a good explanation, it'll be your last. Look, I'm sorry that I was looking for you, but it was for a good cause. I'm hunting the person who's making golems disappear. Huh, <laughs> like I'd buy that. I think either you're the culprit or you're working for him. And I'm not taking any chances on my life here. Let's go, creep. There was no more reasoning with him after that. The obsidian golem attacked me full force, and there was nothing I could do to talk him down. I just fought back as best as I could until he was finally defeated. But in the process, I was almost completely destroyed. Wow, Dino wasn't kidding about golems being powerful. Luckily for me, a friendly Mungus happened to be passing by. He walked over to me, seeming concerned. You okay there, son? You're not looking so hot, aside from the lava, of course. Yeah, I just got beaten up by a huge, powerful obsidian golem, so you're right, I'm not doing too well. Lucky for you, I've got a spare health potion. Here, yeah, take it. You look like you need it more than me. He gave me a health potion, which I quickly drank, delighted to have my health restored. You're a lifesaver, literally. Say, do you have any idea what kind of golem might be able to destroy other golems? I'm hunting a dangerous criminal. A golem that destroys golems, huh? That's a tall order. They need to be an extremely tough golem to do that, not to mention incredibly crafty. An obsidian golem is probably too low level to pull off that kind of evil scheme. An extremely tough golem, interesting. This will give me something to look into. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's awesome pad with less than awesome news. I met Among Us out in the Badlands, Dino, and he seemed to think that the Obsidian Golem didn't have anything to do with all the disappearances. It'd need to be a much stronger golem than him. Huh, who you gonna trust when it comes to golems, little man? Some random Among Us or me, an actual golem? Believe me, nobody knows this situation better than Dino. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. What do you think I should do now then? There's a sandstone golem in the Amaranth Fields. I've got a good reason to believe he's involved in all this. You don't need to investigate him, just take him out. Understood? Understood. I'm sorry for ever doubting you, Dino. Yeah, man, you better be. Now knowing how tough golems were, I knew that I needed better weapons to take them on. That's when I found a mining cave and searched deep inside until I found some iron ore. This is exactly what I need. I mined the iron ore and set to building a furnace in that deep, dark cave. I then used the furnace to smelt the iron ore into iron ingots, which I then turned into an awesome iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I've really got an edge. I left the cave only to find an angry grizzly bear outside waiting for me. So this is your cave, huh? When the bear tried to attack me, I unleashed some web blasts and then defeated it with my iron sword. First a grizzly bear, next a grizzly golem. From day 13 to day 15, I traveled across the amaranth fields in the glistening nightlight, searching for the sandstone golem so I could carry out my mission. I finally spotted the golem, standing at a campfire and warming himself. It was strange, 
He didn't look aggressive at all, but I trusted Dino. I carefully approached, my sword drawn, preparing to fire a web blast at him and then charge in for an attack. But before I could, he turned and saw me standing there. Hey there, friend. You look a little chilly for a lava Spider-Man. Want to come and warm yourself by my fire? Are... are you sure? Of course. There's room enough for everyone around here. I approached carefully and stood next to the sandstone golem, even though Dino had told me not to. We talked for a while, shared some jokes, and strangely, he seemed like a nice guy. I just couldn't believe he'd been behind all the golem disappearances. Something was up. Something fishy. I left the sandstone golem safely by his campfire and went back to talk to Dino. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. From day 16 to day 19, I went straight back to Dino's pad to confront him about all the strange things I'd been noticing lately. He wasn't pleased. What? Why didn't you take out the sandstone golem? Why? Don't you trust me? It's not that I don't trust you, it's just everything you've said to me, it doesn't quite add up. Here's what doesn't add up, kid. You and me. If you don't trust me, as in you don't follow every single one of my orders to the letter without question, I can't work with you. Get out of here and never come back. I'll solve the golem disappearances myself. With that, I left Dino's pad, knowing I'd probably never see him again. I returned to my base, only to see, to my surprise, that the cartographer was waiting for me there again. Oh, hey, cartographer, what's up? No time for small talk. I've discovered something important. The one behind the golem disappearances. It's a diamond golem. What? It makes total sense. That's one of the toughest kinds of golems out there. Only he would be strong enough to easily take out other golems. Oh, oh no. Dino was behind it all, all along. He used me. I need to warn Sandstone. I ran back to the Sandstone Golems camp in the Amaranth Fields, but it was already too late. Sandstone was gone, and only Dino remained. You're too late, Zozo, my man. I just finished up what you should have done. Sandstone's finished. You, you monster, you used me. You've been betraying and destroying your own kind, but why? Simple, a diamond golem is pretty special, but you know what's even more special? Being the only golem, and I like the sound of that. So you're just destroying all the other golems to satisfy your own ego? Yeah, pretty much. Why, you gonna stop me? I'm absolutely gonna stop you. I'm Zozo, the Lava Spider-Man. I'm this world's superhero, and your evil, selfish plan ends here. But it didn't end there, because Dino the Diamond Golem ran up to me and knocked me out cold with a single punch. From day 20 to day 22, I came to at the campsite. Dino wasn't there anymore, but the camp wasn't empty. A TNT Golem was standing right above me. Oh no, you don't work for Dino, do you? Goodness no, I'm Splodo, the TNT Golem. I was here to warn my friend Sandstone about the evil plans of Dino the Diamond Golem, but it seems I was too late. I'm so sorry I couldn't save your friend, Splodo. I should have seen Dino for what he was earlier, but I was so blinded by how cool he seemed. I let him boss me around, but never again. We'll work together to take him down. Splodo returned to my base with me, and I built a new house for him to sleep in while we worked on our shared plan to take down Dino before he could destroy all the golems. I believe in you, Zozo. Together, we're gonna bring this evildoer down. Yeah, we'll be superheroes together. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled back to the Black Forest. It sure feels different being back here after learning so much. I was a lava spider boy back then. Now, I'm a lava spider man. Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! I need a hero! Hey, that's me! Wait, I know that voice! I followed the sound of the voice and saw the cartographer being attacked by a guster! Get away from him! I fired a web blast at the guster, destroying it! Thank you, that was a pretty close one. I'm glad you showed up. Me too, I want to make up for letting Dino trick me, and that means I need to help as many good guys as I can. Being a superhero isn't just about beating the villain, it's about helping the people who need it. From day 27 to day 31, I continued exploring the Black Forest. As I did, I spotted a herd of sheep that looked really lost. Turned out, I was right. They had lost their old home and were trying to find a new, safe place to stay. So I escorted them back to my base. I guess you guys will need a place to stay. No point in inviting you over and then making you just stand around. That would be rude. So I built a pen for the sheep. It wasn't anything fancy, but they seemed pretty happy with it. After I was done building that, I decided to check in on the rest of the base. While I was gone, Splodo the TNT Golem added a chest area and made paths while I was building. Awesome, so much extra storage. Just what every superhero needs. 
Meanwhile, Dino the Diamond Golem was at his base in the Badlands, and he was up to no good. If I'm going to get rid of all the rest of the golems, I'll need some extra muscle. That's where you come in. Think you're up to the task? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to go ahead and guess that means yes, boss. From day 32 to day 35, I hatched a new plan. I need to go back and talk to those Endermen and explain what I know. I think we're actually all on the same side. I just hope they'll listen to me. I traveled back to their base in the Black Forest, where I spotted one of the Endermen standing out front. Hi there, funny story, I was wrong about some stuff. You, bold move coming here, little lava Spider-Man. You're in big trouble. Wait, we don't have to fight. We're on the same side, I promise. Do you think I'm a fool? Why would I believe you? You can take me to your boss. I'll come willingly this time. I just want to talk to him. Interesting. Very well. He took me to an evoker. Hello, my name is Zozo. I, I know who you are. You're an acquaintance of Dino the Diamond Golem, yes? I was, but I was wrong. He tricked me. I'm so sorry. I want to help. I can tell that you have a good and honest heart. The heart of a hero. Very well, young Zozo. There is very little we know for certain at this point, but we do know that the golem disappearances plaguing this land can all be traced back to Dino. I will provide you with more information when I have it, as long as you promise to do the same. It's a deal. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to my base. Those guys were actually pretty nice. I can't believe I was so scared of them before, but now we can work together. If I'm going to be much help, I'll need some better equipment. To the mines! I headed down into the cave and started mining. I found some iron ore, which I smelted into iron ingots. I used it to craft a set of iron armor. I returned to my base shortly after, only to find a toolsmith waiting for me. Excuse me, are you Zozo? Sure am. I brought you something. He handed me a diamond. Oh wow, thank you. What did I do to deserve this? I just thought maybe you could use it. Also, I need your help. Come with me. We have a friend in common who needs to speak with you. From day 40 to day 43, I followed the toolsmith and was surprised to see the evoker. Hey again, what's going on? I just saw you. Indeed, but I have received some new information that I needed to deliver in person as soon as possible. You see, Dino is... But before he could finish what he was saying, a pillager showed up. Bada bing, bada boom. You dead meat, Zozo. Uh-oh, that's me he's talking about. He was way bigger and stronger than me. I'm not sure if I can defeat this guy. Both myself and the evoker ran off in separate directions and met up later, coincidentally. Go, Zozo, run. I will do my best to handle him. I will meet you in a safe place when the coast is clear. You got it. I ran out of there as fast as I could. From day 44 to day 49, I made it back to my base without the pillager following me. I just hope the evoker got out of there okay. I certainly did, young Zozo. The evoker emerged, somehow completely unharmed. You're here, you're alive. Oh, I'm so glad, I was scared the pillager would hurt you. He certainly gave it his best try, but I managed to elude him. I didn't get this far by being an easy target, you know. I may not be much of a fighter, but I know how to survive. Me too, so far at least. I've learned of something that I believe will help you with your continued survival and with our shared goal of stopping Dino from continuing to wreak havoc. Ah, oh, sweet. Tell me about it. There is a special weapon, a destroyer, capable of breaking apart diamonds with very little effort. I imagine it would give you the edge you need against Dino when you finally confront him. Sounds perfect. Where is it? That's the trouble. Its location is a secret. I have heard that there may be useful information in the Badlands, however. I suggest you travel there and see what you can turn up. I'll head there now. From day 50 to day 53, I traveled to the Badlands in search of information on the Destroyer. They call this place the Badlands for a reason. It's terrible. I hope I find something quickly and don't have to stay here for too long. Thankfully, my wish came true. I spotted a book on the ground, and when I picked it up, I noticed the title, The Destroyer and You. Wow, this is super convenient. Okay, it says that the Destroyer is a special weapon, one that's hundreds of years old. It was created to overthrow a corrupt diamond golem who tried to become the king of the land. Hey, that's kind of like what Dino's doing, I think. But where is it? When I flipped to the end of the book, the last page was missing. Oh no, I bet that was the part of the book with the destroyer's location. Guess I'll have to come up with another plan. Back to the spider base.
From day 54 to day 57, I was on my way back to my base when the pillager jumped into view, blocking my path. Hey, I'm walking here. Well, hey, I'm blocking here. You thought you got away, huh? Well, tough toenails, kid. No one gets away from Petey the Pillager. If you won't let me pass, I guess we'll just have to fight about it. Give it a shot, Pipsqueak. I attacked the Pillager, but he didn't even budge. Uh-oh, he's still way too strong. I need to get out of here before this gets serious. I fled the scene and got out of there as fast as I could. Meanwhile, at Dino's hideout, he was feeling triumphant. Another one bites the dust. Soon, I'll be the only golem around. No one's going to be as special as me. All these other golems better watch their backs. From day 58 to day 62, I ran back to my base. When I got there, I saw that my friends there had built an additional storage room for us to keep weapons in. Hey, with all this space, I should make some new weapons to keep in here. To the mines! I headed down into the cave to see what I could find. Turns out, luck was on my side, because what I found was some diamonds. I've heard of fighting fire with fire. Maybe I should try fighting diamonds with more diamonds. I gathered the diamonds and used them to craft a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond chestplate. From day 63 to day 66, Splodo came to speak with me. Zozo, I was able to find out the location of that destroyer you're looking for. Apparently, it's in the Brimstone Caverns. Quick, come with me, I'll show you. I followed Splodo to the Brimstone Caverns. Phew, it smells like rotten eggs in here. Yeah, that's all the Brimstone. Anyway, here's the place. Uh-oh, looks like we can't get in. I think we need some kind of key. Oh no, I'm sorry, Zozo. I'll help you look for a key. We'll get in there. Thanks, Splodo. You're the bomb. Get it? Yeah, I get it. From day 67 to day 70, Splodo and I walked back to my base. When I got there, the evoker was waiting for me. Hey, maybe I should go ahead and build you a guest room. No thank you, Zozo. This is not a social call, I'm afraid. I'm here to ask you for your help. A magma golem is tearing apart the Amaranth fields, and I fear that he will burn them all down in a fit of rage. Please, help me reason with him before his fiery temper destroys everything. I'll do my best. I looked around, following the smell of burning grass, and sure enough, I spotted a magma golem stomping around. He looked really angry. Hey, I can see you're upset about something, but you don't have to do this. Please stop before someone gets hurt. You! I know you! You're working with him! That awful diamond golem who killed Sandstone! I have nothing to say to you. With my mouth, at least. We can talk with my fists. Your fist can talk? Oh, no, you mean you're gonna fight me. Wait! He wouldn't listen! He attacked me, and I had to fight back! My diamond chestplate protected me from taking too much damage, and I managed to knock him back long enough to talk again. I don't work with Dino anymore. I realized what kind of guy he really was. Now I'm trying to stop him from hurting any more golems. I swear. You're not just lying to save your skin? No. From a lava guy to a magma guy, I promise I'm telling the truth. Then I've got an idea. Let's you and me work together and show that diamond-studded jerk he's not as special as he thinks he is. From day 71 to day 74, I showed the magma golem back to my base. He told me that he had lost his home while trying to run from Dino, and he didn't have anywhere else to go. Luckily, we had plenty of room. You can stay here for as long as you want. It'll be fun. But I couldn't stick around for the housewarming. The pillager turned up, ready to cause some trouble. Still gonna be fun when I crash your potty, little man? Oh no, the pillager. That's right. Hey, nice place you got here. Would be a shame if something happened to it. With that, he started attacking my base and smashing it up. I drew my diamond sword and attacked the pillager, but he was still stronger than me. Nice try, Pipsqueak, but no dice. I'm gonna take something of yours to teach you a lesson. Before I could stop him, he ran away. Zozo, help! That was Splodo's voice. I ran in to help, but the pillager and Splodo were already gone. I couldn't stop him from taking Splodo. What kind of hero am I? I couldn't take it anymore, and I went to my room to lie down. A little while later, the magma golem came to my room. Zozo, I built some additional defenses while you were resting. We have a new perimeter wall around the base to protect against any future invaders. Thank you. That makes me feel a little bit better. Now I just need to find a way to get Splodo back. Meanwhile, in the Badlands. Now that the pillager has taken that TNT golem that I couldn't get to before, I'm one step closer. That loser Zozo is never gonna beat me. 
From day 75 to day 78, I was busy trying to come up with a plan to rescue Splodo. I'm not ready to fight the pillager yet. I'm going to need something to give me an edge. A new weapon or another ability? Something! And as if on cue, the evoker appeared. Zozo, I heard what happened to your explosive little friend. I believe this may help you. The pillager is vulnerable to explosive attacks and has very sensitive eyes. Its flashy ammunition should both damage and distract him. He handed me a firework crossbow. Oh, this is awesome. Do you know where I can find the pillager? I know many things, Zozo. And yes, that is one of them. He lives just outside of Dino's lair in the Badlands. Thank you. I took my new crossbow and set off to find the pillager and get my friend back. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled to the Badlands. It didn't take long for me to spot the pillager lurking around outside of Dino's base. Give me back my friend. Nah, I don't feel like it. Maybe this will change your mind. I fired my firework crossbow and it actually managed to hit. Hey, maybe I can actually do this. And so the battle with the pillager began. I felt much more confident with my new weapon, but he was still much stronger than me. Ready to give up? No, this is merely a tactical retreat. I ran away until I found a big rock to hide behind, where I met, against all odds, Splodo the TNT Golem. Zozo, I escaped, and on my way out, I managed to grab this. Quick, eat it. He tossed me a golden apple. I ate it in one big bite, and I felt myself growing stronger. My heart increased to 60, and I gained a jump boost. I grew, too. That golden apple gave me the strength I needed to finally defeat the pillager. I ran back, fighting the pillager one-on-one, -on -one until nothing was left. Dino's strongest henchman had been defeated, and Splodo came over to celebrate with me. I did it! Thank you, Splodo. You're a real hero. So are you. Come on, let's go home. From day 85 to day 89, Splodo and I returned to the base. Guess what? Chicken butt? No, that's <laughs> really funny, though. I grabbed something that the pillager dropped when you beat him. It's a magic key. I think it's the key to the Brimstone Caverns. You can finally go and get the Destroyer. That's amazing. You've helped so much. Thank you, Splodo. You can thank me by getting rid of Dino once and for all. With the magic key in hand, I traveled back to the Brimstone Caverns. I held my breath as I unlocked the door and entered the caverns. There, I saw it. The Destroyer. Yes, finally. I started walking toward it, but a wither skeleton jumped in the way. Oh, no you don't. It attacked me, but I fought back. It took a little while, but I managed to defeat it. A destroyer, yes! I've got to get this back to my base. From day 90 to day 94, I left the Brimstone Caverns, ready to head back to my base. But as I exited the caverns, Dino the Diamond Golem appeared in behind me. Hey Zozo, how's it going? What? Aren't you here to attack me? Nah, why would I do that? We used to work together pretty well, you and me. What do you say we team up again? Give it another shot. Are you kidding? You lied to me. You kidnapped my friend. You're trying to hurt tons of people. Why would I ever work with you? Because when I'm the big boss around here, you're going to want to be on my good side. I don't think you have a good side. With great power comes a lot of responsibility, and you've misused it at every turn. Thanks, but no thanks. Fine, have it your way. Before I could stop him, he pushed me into a deep hole and snatched the destroyer out of my hands. He left me there and took the weapon with him. From day 95 to day 97, I used my new climbing skills to escape Dino's trap. But by the time I got out, he was long gone and so was the destroyer. I need some advice. I should go visit the evoker and see what he thinks I should do. I traveled to the Black Forest to see if the evoker had any tips for me. But when I got there, the place was in chaos. The evoker was there, but he was badly injured. Oh no, what happened? Dino came through on a rampage. He must have learned that I told you about the Destroyer. I don't have much time, little lava Spider-Man. Listen close. You must get the Destroyer back. It holds a great power, and it will give you the strength you need to defeat him. The weapon itself is not what matters, but the strength within you that it will bring to the surface. The power is within you. And just like that, he was gone. Thank you for everything. I promise to get revenge on Dino for everything he's done. On day 98, I returned to my base to get some rest and come up with the next phase of my plan. But when I got there, it was a mess. The perimeter wall was destroyed and I couldn't see my friends anywhere. Oh no, Dino must have done this. 
He did. Splodo, you're okay! I am. I managed to hide from him. Everyone else ran away. I don't blame them. It was scary. But don't get discouraged, Zozo. We're going to be superheroes together, remember? I'm not so sure, Splodo. He's so much more powerful than us. How can we ever hope to beat him? Listen, I know it seems hopeless, but we have to try. I'm still here. It's not over yet. He came after our base. Now we need to take the fight to him. On day 99, I traveled to the Badlands to confront the baddest guy in those lands once and for all. I don't know if I'll make it through this, but I know I have to try. Splodo was right. I can't lose hope now. When I got there, he was waiting for me. Hey, Zozo. Welcome to my humble abode. Ready to lose another fight? Nope. I attacked him, but he hit hard. I took a lot of damage, but I got an idea. I got my firework crossbow and fired a shot. It surprised Dino, and he jumped back. When he did, he dropped the destroyer. Now's my chance. I grabbed the destroyer and took off in the opposite direction of Dino's base. Yeah, you better run. I'll be back. I took the destroyer back to my base and remembered what the evoker said. The power is in me. I just have to find it. I used the destroyer, and as I did, I had a vision of every fight I'd had so far, every friend I'd made along the way. I felt so much stronger. When the vision ended, I saw that my base was magically repaired, as if Dino had never destroyed it. That's it. I'm ready. On day 100, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's base for the final showdown. This time, I had the destroyer, and more importantly, the heart of a hero. My heart, I mean. You're too late, Zozo. Pretty soon there won't be any golems left. You think you're special? You're not special. I'm the only one who's special. That's not true. You think you're better than everyone else, and that's why you'll never really win. I used the destroyer to attack, and for the first time, I did some real damage to Dino. Hey, what's the big idea? Justice, that's what. It was a tough fight. Dino was the strongest opponent I had ever faced, but I knew I could beat him. And after a hard battle, I finally did. I can't wait to go home and tell Splodo. We did it. We beat the bad guy. We're real superheroes after all. On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as an awesome lava dinosaur. I may only be a baby, but I think when I grow up, I'm gonna be the coolest creature of all. But being that cool comes with certain drawbacks. You attract a lot of attention. That must have been why a terrifying soul blaze suddenly appeared in front of me. Behold, tis I, the ultimate being, the Lord of Souls, and I wish to add yours to my collection, Zozo. Wait. How do you know my name? I know all. I see all. And in time, I will be able to do all. I will absorb your power, little lava dinosaur. And with it, I will become unstoppable. My power? I don't even have any power yet. Oh, but you will, Zozo. You will. Over the next 100 days, I will challenge you. I will hunt you. Through these trials, I will make you strong. And then, when you reach the height of your power, you will be mine. Before I could try to talk him out of this wild plan, he fired an energy blast from his supercharged Soul Blaze rods. I ran as fast as I could, terrified by what he planned to do. I want to get stronger, but if I do, will I just be playing into the Lord of Souls' hands? This is going to be a tough one. On day two, I ventured out deeper into the Badlands to try and see what I could find. There's still a lot I don't know about this place. It's called the Badlands, but it seems pretty okay to me so far. I've got to be careful, though. I only have 10 hearts, so I want to stay out of trouble. Suddenly, I heard my stomach growl. Oh, that's right. I've been alive for almost two days, and I haven't eaten yet. I better find some snacks. I wasn't sure what kind of food I could find in the Badlands, but as I was looking around, I spotted something red on the ground. Hey, apples, perfect. An apple a day keeps the Lord of Souls away. That's the saying, right? I ate the apples and felt much better with a full stomach. Good luck didn't last long. I saw some Vex Piglins scowling at me and flying toward me. Face us, Zozo. The Lord of Souls sent us to test your strength. No, I don't wanna. Too bad. Time to fight. They got even closer and started to attack. I did my best to defend myself, but I had never fought anyone before, and these guys were way too strong for me. All I could do was run away from those terrifying Vex Piglins, and in the process, I ran into a spider llama. Follow me. These piggies can eat my dust.
On day three, the spider llama led me to a campfire further out in the Badlands. It was a huge relief to find a cozy, safe place to rest for a while. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mostly mean sleeping and hanging out with my buddy, the fire guardian. I don't see a fire guardian until I did see one standing by the fire. That's because I'm over here guarding this fire. Hello there, baby lava dinosaur. I see you too are being forged in fire. May your flame burn brightly. Thanks, I'm Zozo, by the way. It's nice to meet you, Zozo. My name is Dennis, and this spider llama who brought you here goes by the name Zack. I'm grateful for both of you. Those Vex piglins cornered me in a totally unfair fight. They were working for this awful Soul Blaze. Big scary guy, maybe you know him? Unfortunately, I do. The Lord of Souls means to add you to his collection, I assume? Yes, he said he's going to wait for me to become strong. Then he's going to take my soul and steal my power. So I decided I'm not going to get stronger at all. That way, he won't get me. I'll just lay low and stay out of trouble. I know it seems frightening, but you must seek strength and progress anyway. But you can't allow the Lord of Souls to steal that strength. Instead, you must use it against him so that he never takes another soul again. Oh, jeez, that sounds like a lot of work. It will be, but you will have help. No dinosaur is truly alone in this world, not when he has friends. Go with Zack and build your first base. We'll develop from there. Okay, then it's decided. I'll become the biggest, strongest lava dinosaur I can, and I'll defeat the Lord of Souls before he can use my power to become unstoppable. It's the right thing to do. From day four to day five, I got to work building my base. First things first, to build my base, I need some tools. I'm gonna need to gather some wood. Can I even touch trees without setting them on fire? I sure hope so. Luckily, me being a lava dinosaur didn't have any effect on the trees, and I was able to gather some wood. Then I used that wood to craft a wooden pickaxe. Next, I'll get some stone. I used the wooden pickaxe to gather enough stone to craft a full set of stone tools, including a stone sword. My first sword, check me out. I'm not just a weak little baby dinosaur anymore. Now I'm a baby dinosaur with a sword. But I didn't have time to practice sword fighting. I needed to build a place for me and Zack to stay. I built a small house and added a room for Zack and another room for me. There we go, home sweet home. Nice digs, simple but nice. We can always add more too. Zack went inside and I was able to follow him when a skeleton ran up and started attacking me. Luckily, I had my new stone sword and I was able to defend myself. I was still pretty new to fighting, but I managed to defeat him. After the fight, I started to feel funny. Not in a bad way, but different. I grew a little bigger and I felt stronger. My hearts increased to 30. Yay! As I yelled, I saw a blast of fire shoot out of my mouth. Cool, fire breath. I'll have to be careful not to accidentally burn anything down when I talk, but this is awesome. From day six to day eight, I decided that it was time for me to explore the area outside of the Badlands. I can't just hang around here forever. I've gotta get out there and learn more about being a lava dinosaur. Like, what's the difference between a lava dinosaur and a dragon? Is it that I don't have wings? I gotta find out. I'd also stop the Lord of Souls from stealing my power. Eh, that too. I traveled to the Black Forest. I thought Black Forest was a type of cake, but I don't see any cake here. I guess life is disappointing sometimes. Oh well. I was distracted by the lack of cake when I saw a poor old fisherman being attacked by a nasty thorn wolf. I ran at the wolf with my sword and attacked. It took a while to defeat the thorn wolf and it snarled at me, snapping its jaws. It was pretty scary, but I managed to fight it off. Thank you, young dinosaur. I was afraid that blasted wolf would tear me limb from limb. Yikes, I'm glad he didn't. You need your limbs. I sure do. Can't reel in the fish without them, which is what I was trying to do when I was attacked by that beast. But if you think that thorn wolf was bad, you should see the other guy, the wolf guy that is. Say, if you manage to defeat that mongrel, maybe you can defeat this monster too. Could you give it a try? Sure, I can try. Just show me where to go. From day nine to day 10, I followed the fisherman to a place deeper in the black forest. Is it just me or is it getting really creepy in here? It's definitely not just you. You can probably sense the thorn corrupted wolfman that's taken over this part of the woods, which is a shame because some of the best fishing is over here and I can't get to it with him attacking anyone who gets too close. That's not fair. I'll do my best to make sure you get your fishing spot back. Up ahead, the thorn corrupted wolfman appeared. He had nasty matted fur and wild eyes. Ow! Who's trespassing in my forest? It's me, Zozo. 
You, huh? Well, I was getting pretty hungry. I guess you'll make a nice snack. How about you try some fire breath? I used my fire breath to attack, but the wolfman didn't even flinch. He came back at me and slashed me with his claws. Ow, oh, this might be too tough of a fight for me. I ran back to the fisherman and away from danger as quick as I could. Quick, let's get out of here. You're just giving up. No, I'll come back when I'm stronger. But if that's gonna happen, we need to survive another day. Come on. The fisherman agreed, and we both ran out of there until we couldn't hear the wolfman's bone-chilling howls anymore. From day 11 to day 12, I led the fisherman back to my base. You can stay here until the Black Forest is a wolfman-free zone. Well, thank you, but is there any room for me? I don't want to be rude, but your home looks pretty small. Well, I can fix that. Just wait right here. I'll build you a room. I got to work and built a nice room for the fisherman to sleep in. When I was finished, I saw that he wasn't where I left him. He had added another room to the base too. What's this? Just a wee token of my appreciation. I thought you might need more room for items and such, so I built you a storage room. I hope you'll find it useful. You didn't have to do that. There is very little we truly have to do in this world. It doesn't mean it isn't worth doing. I'm glad there are nice people out there, and not just the Lord of Souls and his minions. Stay far away from him, my friend. He would love to steal a power like yours. That's what he told me too. I'm going to do my best to defeat him so he can't steal people's power anymore. Be very careful. I've heard rumors that he's been waiting for the chance to absorb the strength of a fire-breathing dragon. And as a lava dinosaur, you're probably the next best thing. Yikes! Talk with the fisherman inspired me to keep working on upgrading my weapons, so I went to a nearby cavern to get some mining done. I gathered some iron ore, which I took back to my base and smelted into iron ingots. Then I used them to make an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Spiffy! Hey, with another new person staying here, we're going to need more supplies. I should find some animals. I spotted some sheep grazing nearby and decided that they would be perfect. I built a sheep farm for them and herded them into their pen. This place is really coming together. From day 13 to day 15, I was out of ideas for how to get stronger, so I decided to ask Zach for some advice. Hey, you're a tough guy, right? Sure am. Why, did someone say I wasn't? I'll fight them. No. No, no, I, I just wanted to ask you what you think I should do to get stronger. What should I do? Well, everyone's journey is different, little dude. But I do know that facing your fears is a good way to grow. Maybe try that. Well, I was pretty scared in the Black Forest. I guess I can go back there. I'll just make sure I don't run into the Wolfman. Oh, uh, yeah, don't mess with the Wolfman. They're always looking for a fight, and they're no fun at parties. I traveled back to the Black Forest, keeping an eye out for the Wolfman. Gotta face my fears. It's so creepy in here though. Why is this forest so scary? As if to answer my question, some vexed piglins popped out. Maybe it's because you're nothing but a weak little baby. Oh no, it's those vexed piglins again. Yep, we've decided you're a waste of the boss's time. It would be better to just get rid of you and find a better target for him. Guess I have to fight you then and face my fears. I used my fire breath to attack, then ran at them with my new iron sword. They fought back, but I dodged them. After a little bit of fire breath and sword action, I was finally able to defeat them. I did it. Zack was right. I do feel stronger. Oh, look, a health potion. They must have dropped it. I picked up the health potion and drank it. My heart increased to 60 and my claws got sharper. Cool, I have a new ability, claw attack. From day 16 to day 19, my exploration took me out of the Black Forest and into the Cypress Swamplands. So nice to change out those old trees for some new, different trees. And those different trees brought me good luck because I spotted a book and picked it up. The title said, Better Living Through Exposition. What does that mean? Better take a look inside just to see. Okay, it says that the Lord of Souls hides somewhere dry and hot. So definitely not anywhere nearby then. That's good to know. Why read about it? You'll be winding up there soon enough. Vex piglins? But I just defeated you. No, those are some other Vex piglins. There are dozens of us, dozens, and we're all coming after you. Well, this worked before, so I guess I'll try it again. Fire breath attack. I used my fire breath, but it wasn't quite enough to defeat them. So I followed it up with a few swipes of my claws. Claw attack. 
Turns out, the Vex Piglins were no match for my new and improved claws, and I managed to win the battle! From day 20 to day 22, I headed back home to my base. On the way, I fought a mean-looking spider to test out my new abilities. It was easy to beat, way easier than the Vex Piglins! Okay, now I need to get back into the mines and see if I can find some more materials. Zozo needs some iron armor. I don't know why I talked about myself in third person like that. Let's go! I climbed down into the mining cavern and searched until I found some iron ore. Back at my base, I smelted the ore and used the iron ingots to craft an iron chest plate. This thing makes me feel pretty tough. Between this and my new abilities, I think I can finally fight the Wolfman. With my new confidence, and more importantly, my new chest plate, I traveled back to the Black Forest to look for the thorn corrupted Wolfman. I followed the sound of his howl until I found him. When he saw me, he growled. Back again? Good, I was starting to get hungry. And you're bigger now. Even better, I could use a good meal. He came at me with his claws, but I had claws too. I used my claw attack, and he looked shocked at how much damage it did. That didn't stop him though, and he attacked me again. But my iron chest plate protected me from his fangs and claws, and I was able to get the upper hand and win the fight. Splendid. I turned around, and the Lord of Souls was there! You're getting stronger, I see. Soon you will be strong enough, and your power will make me invincible! Or I'll use it to defeat you! Impossible. You were born for this very purpose. A prophecy foretold that the power of a fire-breathing dragon would allow me to conquer all. But I'm a dinosaur! Close enough! I didn't want to stick around to hear what else he had to say, so I got out of there as fast as I could! From day 23 to day 26, I ran away from the Lord of Souls and headed back to my base! I can't stand that guy! At least I have good news for the fishermen! Speak of the devil! You do? I love good news! Yes, the Wolfman is finally gone! You can go back to your favorite fishing spot again! Thank you so much, Zozo. Next time I catch a fish, I'll name it after you. Okay. Next, I went back into the mining cavern to find some more iron ore. Once I had it, I smelted it and used the ingots to craft an iron helmet and boots. Pretty snazzy stuff. While I was admiring my new armor, the fisherman came to talk to me again. Before I head out to catch some fish, I built a perimeter wall for the base. Something to keep us all a little safer here. Just my way of saying thanks for getting rid of that man-eating wolfman. No problem. Whoa, it looks great. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to return to the Cypress Swamplands to see if I could find anything else useful. I found that book here before. Who knows what else I might stumble on? Turns out, the answer was a fire elemental. And he stumbled on me. Excuse me, are you the dragon that got rid of the Vex Piglins who were here earlier? I'm a dinosaur. But yeah, that was me. That was really impressive. They were causing a huge mess around here. But before you managed to get them, they got to my house and destroyed it. Any chance you know where I could stay for a while? Follow me. I'll show you the way to my base. I escorted the fire elemental back to my base. Then I collected some fluffy wool from my sheep. You know what, sheep? I think this place is looking a little bit boring. What do you think? The sheep didn't say anything back, but I could tell they agreed. So I put up some decorative banners. Much better. From day 32 to day 35, Zack came to me to ask for help. What's going on? It's Dennis. He's facing some kind of menace. I think that Lord of Souls sent some creeps to mess with him. Oh no, let's go right away. I traveled to Dennis the Fire Guardian's campfire, and by the time we got there, there were Vex Piglins all over the place, and I couldn't see Dennis anywhere. You will pay for this! I rushed in and blasted the piglins with my fire breath. Then I shredded them with my claw attack. I was able to defeat a bunch of them, and once they were out of the way, I saw Dennis fading away. Oh no! Zozo, you came. Thank you. But I'm afraid it's too late for me. Be strong. Help the others. Save the world. And just like that, he was gone. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to the Black Forest so I could see how the fisherman was doing at his fishing spot. Before I could get to the fishing spot, a ghost miner drifted out from between two trees and approached me. Well, I'll be. You look like a strong youngin who might just be able to help out an old timer like me. What do you say? Sure. What do you need? 
back before I was a ghost. I was attacked by a deep spider around these parts. Suppose you could destroy that spider so I can finally get my revenge on the critter? Sure. I searched the black forest until I found the deep spider. It was pretty easy to defeat with just a blast of my fire breath and a few swipes of my sword. Then I went back to the ghost miner. I did it! Hoo-hee! Feels good to let my soul be at rest. Thank you, Sonny. Speaking of souls, better be careful of yours around that soul eater fella. If he snatches yours, there's no getting it back. He'll absorb all your power and leave nothing but a husk behind. I'll make sure to remember that. Thanks. From day 40 to day 43, I returned home to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had added a nice new lounge area outside. Wow. This looks so nice. It's the perfect place to curl up with a good book and relax. I'll definitely do that once my quest is complete and the Lord of Souls is dealt with. I wonder who did this? It was me, little dude. Oh, cool. But why? I don't want to cramp your style, but I've got a few buddies that need a place to stay. Mind if they kick it here with us for a bit? Sure, that would be great. A little while later, some other spider llamas came to the base. Zozo, these are my bro bros. Welcome to my base, everybody. After I said hi to the spider llamas, the fire elemental came to see me. I know you've already done a ton to help me, but could you do one more thing? There's a skulk scorpion that's, well, skulking around the ruins of my old house. Until he's gone, I can't rebuild it. I'll write him a strongly worded letter. Just kidding, I'll go out there and see if I can get him to leave. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled back to the Cypress Swamplands to look for that pesky skulk scorpion that was giving the fire elemental so much trouble. Is there a scorpion in the house or around the ruins of the former house? I didn't get an answer. What I got instead was an unwelcome surprise appearance from the Lord of Souls. Why waste your time trying to help other weaklings when you could be growing stronger, when you could be fueling my eventual victory over all? This isn't about you! Foolish Zozo! Everything is about me. Now, hone your combat skills and fight! He disappeared, and in his place, there was a huge, powerful Pigless! I don't want to fight you, but I get a feeling I don't have much of a choice. From day 50 to day 53, I battled the Pigless. He was much bigger and stronger than me, but I did my best to hold my own. I did have one thing he didn't have though, Fire Breath, and my other dinosaur abilities. With the help of those moves and my positive attitude, I managed to defeat him. You may have bested me, but only a pure heart and a diamond sword and defeat the Lord of Souls. With those final words, he vanished into dust. Oh, that was a tough one, but I did it. Oh, hey, sparkly. The piglets dropped some mystical diamonds. I'd better take these with me. They'll probably come in handy later. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed my search for the Skulk Scorpion. No matter what the Lord of the Souls says, I know it's worth it to help out those who need it. I spotted the ruins of a house, and there, nested in the middle of it all, was the Skulk Scorpion. You can't just take this place, it's someone's home. The Scorpion just approached me threateningly and attacked. But the Scorpion Stinger was no match for my claw attack. Pretty soon, I had won. I sprinted back to my base and gave the Fire Elemental the news. Wonderful, thank you, Zozo. You really are amazing. No wonder the Lord of Souls thinks you're the hero from the prophecy. He's convinced that you're the fabled fire dragon that can give him the power to take over the world. All he needs is for you to come into your full potential. Then he'll steal your soul. I keep saying I'm not a dragon. I know you are love a dinosaur. I've met others of your kind before. You have many abilities similar to those of dragons, but you're different too. Thank you. I was starting to worry I might be wrong. So many people kept calling me a dragon. Never let anyone tell you who you are, Zozo. You know yourself better than anyone. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to make some quick improvements to the base. I built another sheep pen and found some more sheep to herd into it. Welcome home, little sheep. Next, I remembered what the piglet said about a diamond sword. So I went into the cavern and mined until I found some diamonds. I was going to use them to craft a diamond sword, but then I remembered I also picked up those mystical diamonds before. So I used those to make my sword and the other diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe. Afterwards, I exited my base and noticed Zack standing outside my door. 
Little dude, I added some awesome stuff to the base. Check it. I expanded the resting area outside to make it even better. This looks amazing. I can't wait to hang out here. From day 63 to day 66, I was trying to decide what to do next. I went down into the mines where I was surprised to find the fisherman. Zozo, I was looking for you. I heard that the Lord of Souls has his hideout in the dunes. I thought it might be worth a look. Oh, that's good to know. It's definitely somewhere dry and hot, like that book said. I'll go check it out. I traveled to the dunes and looked around for any sign of the Lord of Souls or his hideout. I didn't want to find him yet, but I wanted to be as prepared as possible. While I was exploring, I wandered into the domain of a crimson phantom. Get out of here. No associates of the Lord of Souls are welcome. Wait, I'm not one. I don't work for him. I'm trying to get rid of him. Oh, that's great news. Sorry for the scare. Hi, my name's Coco. Hi, Coco. I'm Zozo. So, if you're a good guy, does that mean you could help me get rid of the creeper spider that's been lurking around and trying to bite me? Sure does. I'm great at fighting spiders. From day 67 to day 70, I helped Coco the Crimson Phantom with her spider problem. It didn't take long to find the creepy spider. It was creeping around nearby and looking for a chance to bite her. Hey, there's a bug problem here, and I'm the exterminator. I don't think spiders count as bugs, but I like your spirit. I'm not good at bug science, but I'm good at fighting. I blasted the creeper spider with my fire breath, then attacked it with my diamond sword. Pretty soon, it was done for. That spider won't be bothering you anymore. I can't thank you enough. I wish you lots of luck in your quest. From day 71 to day 74, I continued exploring the dunes. I can figure out where the Lord of Souls lives. I'll know where to go when I'm ready to fight him. Speaking of fighting and adventuring, if you want to see more videos like this, search Z-O, Z-O, that's Zozo, me. But that call to action attracted the attention of none other than the Lord of Souls. Zozo, there you are. Uh-oh. Why aren't you cultivating that wonderful power for me? Soon it will be time for me to take it. I tried to blast him with my fire breath, but it didn't even make a mark. He was way too strong. I had to run out of there before it was too late. From day 75 to day 78, I went back to my base and headed into the pool to cool off. I can't believe I had to run away. What if I'm never strong enough to beat him? What if I get just strong enough to help him and I ruin everything? Just then, the fire elemental came to see me. That won't happen, Zozu. I know it. Hey, to get your mind off things, check out what I built. It's a watchtower for the base. I'll admit, that's pretty cool. It's hard to be sad with a watchtower like this. Thanks. After that, my main man, Zack, approached me. If you like that, then how about these apples? Sorry, that was confusing. There aren't any apples, but I do have this mace. Awesome. Let me try it out. When I did, I felt magic coursing through me. I grew bigger and stronger. The gift increased my hearts to 100, and I felt like I had a new power too. I tested it out, and I was right. Whoa, you have a dragon fireball ability. Nope, I have a dinosaur fireball ability. From day 79 to day 84, I returned to the dunes, feeling much more confident in myself as a hero. I didn't see the Lord of Souls anywhere, but I did see a zombie shuffling around and tested my fireball out on it. It worked! I blew that zombie to smithereens! Hey, that was really cool. A big axolotl came over to congratulate me. I got this for my uncle's birthday, but I actually think you should have it. You're a way better fighter than him. He handed me diamond leggings. Whoa, thanks. Sorry to your uncle, though. Nah, it's fine. I'll just get him a gift card. His leggings will go great with the rest of my diamond gear. From day 85 to day 89, I headed back to my base to show my friends my new diamond leggings. But when I got there, it was under attack. There were Vex piglins all over the place. Hey, get out of here. Stop. I rushed towards the piglins and started to defeat them one by one using my mace. But some of them managed to run off and I gave chase. I lost sight of them after a while, but I didn't give up. I heard a loud buzzing sound though. And when I looked in its direction, I saw a giant mosquito. Ah, don't bite me. Bite you? Oh no, that's not why I'm here. I need help breaking apart this block. I've been trying for days, but I have no tools and my little bug arms are too weak. Quickly, I broke the block apart with my pickaxe. There you go. Gotta run. Bye. 
I'll never forget you, kind stranger! From day 90 to day 94, I tracked the Vex Piglins to a spot in the dunes! This place looks super evil! Oh, this must be the lair of the Lord of Souls! I'd better not get too close! I noticed something I hadn't seen before! The Vex Piglins had an Enderblaze with them! They were all listening to him and following his orders! We messed that place up good, huh? Yeah, the Lord of Souls will be pleased with your service. As his right-hand man, I will deliver reports of your loyalty. I rushed out of my hiding place and confronted the Enderblaze. So you're the one who messed up my base. I guess this fireball is for you then! From day 95 to day 97, I began my battle against the Enderblaze. I shot a fireball at him, but he shot a fireball back at me. I dodged it, but just barely. Ouch, that's hot! Glad it didn't hit me, but this guy is really strong. This is my hardest fight yet. I drew my mace and attacked again. This time, I had more luck. I managed to do some damage, and that gave me the confidence to keep going. I got him with my claw attack, my mace again, and that managed to finish him off. When he went down, the Enderblaze dropped a key. This must unlock the Lord of Souls base. This is awesome. Yeah, take the key. Go inside. It's right where the Lord of Souls wants you to be. Once he has your power, he will burn down the entire world to rebuild it in his image. Thank you, Zozo. You will ensure his victory. With that, he was gone. I won't let that be true. It can't. I have to get ready because it's time to prove the Lord of Souls wrong. On day 98, I returned to my base, more determined than ever. I'm almost out of days. I've got to make every moment count. First, the fire elemental came to speak with me. Zozo, you saved my home. Without you, I would have nowhere to go. I know that you can conquer this force of evil. Then came Zack, the spider llama. Little dude. Well, not such a little dude anymore. But you'll always be little dude to me. I'm so proud of you, man. You're going to do great. Dennis would be proud too. And finally, the fisherman. Sozo, I've brought you a fish. In case you get hungry or need some extra protein. Good luck, brave dinosaur. On day 99, I started my journey to the Lord of Souls base. On the way there, I passed through the Black Forest. I can't believe I used to be scared of this place. That seems like so long ago now. Finally, I reached the base, but it was crawling with Vex Piglins. Oh no, I'll have to fight all of them to get inside. No, you won't. I will. Coco! You solved my pest problem, I'll solve yours. Go, Zozo, get inside. Thank you. Leaving Coco to take on the Vex Piglins, I unlocked the door and ran inside. On day 100, I entered the lair of the Lord of Souls. I had faith in myself, but I was still so scared that I would lose. If the Lord of Souls beat me, it wouldn't only be me who suffered, it would hurt everyone. So I guess the solution to this is don't lose. I found the Lord of Souls waiting for me in his room. Ah, here you are. As foretold, the missing piece in the puzzle of my total domination of all life. Not so fast. I shot a fireball at the Lord of Souls and it hit him. But all he did was laugh. Zozo, fire cannot harm a Lord of Souls. You cannot burn me. I can get you with this. While he was gloating, I attacked him with my mace. He staggered back from the hit. No, impossible. The prophecy. A fire dragon will give me the power I need to ascend to victory. A fire dragon might have helped you become the ultimate ruler of the world, but this lava dinosaur is going to destroy you. I swung my mace again and again as we fought fiercely against each other. Finally, I landed one last hit, and the Lord of Souls collapsed on the ground. I guess it turns out that when it comes to prophecies, close enough just doesn't cut it. On day one, I spawned in as the Grim Reaper. Then I noticed I was tiny, and I only had three hearts. What is this nonsense? I looked around and saw that I was in front of a castle. Ooh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look inside. I opened the door and called out. Anybody home? Maybe one of my friends lived here or something. I started wandering around and found myself in a throne room. What is that? I saw a man with a mutant wither skeleton. He was holding a scythe. Wait, I think that's my scythe. How did you get it? The man screamed in rage and pointed at me. Destroy him. 
A bunch of zombies came out from the back room, and I gasped in shock. Without even thinking, I fired an icy blast that froze some of the zombies solid. Huh, that's interesting. I guess this is because I'm as cold as death. I ran out the door and down the stairs as the zombies followed me. That was not what I was expecting. And why does that guy have an army of zombies? That's not right. I found a small cave and decided to sleep there for the night. Tomorrow, I'll find out what's going on. On day two, I left the cave to go exploring. I walked for half a day until I found my way to the Atom Forest. I don't really have a home, so I guess I'm gonna have to make one. I started collecting some wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After some additional mining and crafting, I had some simple stone tools and weapons. Well, it's better than nothing. I had been working so hard all day, so when I stopped, I realized I was hungry. What does a grim reaper eat? I found some cows and pigs and cooked up some food for myself. It didn't do anything to help. In fact, it made me feel sick. Gross, I need to find something else. I noticed that it had gotten dark. Suddenly, a group of zombies popped out and started attacking me. With my new stone sword, I was able to take them out easily. They had dropped some meat and I stared at it hungrily. Maybe this will help me? I ate the meat and sure enough, my hearts were restored. I feel much better now. I made it back to my base and worked on a few more things before heading to bed. On day three, I went back out to find more materials for the base. It was safe enough, but I wanted to make some improvements. It turned out to be a nice day. I hope nothing too crazy happens today. I realized I had spoken too soon because just then I heard an awful crash. I ran to see what the noise was when I saw a dread queen fighting a bunch of zombies. Hey, leave her be. I rushed forward with my weapons. The zombies started to attack me when I remembered my trick at the castle. I fired out some ice blasts and froze up some of those nasty zombies. The others noticed and started to run away. Nice job, Death. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Did you shrink? Who are you? I'm Famine. Do you know me? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, this must have been Lord Terror's doing. I knew he was up to no good. I was so confused at this point. Famine could see that I was overwhelmed. You are the Grim Reaper, or Death. I'm Famine, and we have two friends, War and Pestilence. We establish order in the world. But Lord Terror, as he calls himself, started messing with stuff. He's been infiltrating the villages and turning people into undead. That's horrible. Those souls need to be freed and move on. I thought that's what you were planning, but nobody has seen you for a while. Now I know something bad happened. You're smaller and you don't look like yourself. This is a lot to take in. How about we get back to my base? It's not a castle, but it's safer than out here. Sure. Famine and I made our way back to my base just in time for the sun to set. On days four to five, I helped Famine make a little home at my base. I was driven out of my home by the undead. I guess Lord Terror is getting more powerful as the days go on. The house wasn't too fancy, but Famine seemed to like it, and she thanked me. No problem, anything for a friend. I went out to look for some more supplies when I saw a group of skeletons near a cave entrance. I'm deaf, surely they won't want to harm me. As I approached, they seemed friendly, but then they started shooting me with their bows. Hey, we aren't enemies. Honestly, I didn't know anymore. I was just a baby after all. I used my sword to attack, and soon enough, they were all gone. Hey, what's that? I noticed a bow on the ground, and I picked it up. It had an enchantment of flame on it. Nice, this will come in handy. On day six to eight, well out in the forest near my base, I gathered some meat from some more cows and pigs. Famine got hungry a lot after all. I'm gonna keep working and getting stronger. Lord Terror doesn't stand a chance against me. Is that so? I looked, and to my surprise, it was Lord Terror. He had a few zombies around him. Let those innocent souls go. You don't have a right to keep them here. Lord Terror laughed and swung the scythe around. I'm the Lord of Death now, Little Reaper. I won your scythe fair and square. What are you talking about? He seemed tired of talking, so he swung at me instead. Whoa! He was fast. I tried to dodge him, but he kept getting hits in. I beat you once. I will beat you again. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me. As I did, I heard Lord Terror laughing from behind me. That's right, Little Reaper. Run away. I will see you soon enough.
On days 9 to 10, I made it back to the base. Famine could tell I was hurt, and she tried her hardest to help me. It's okay, Death. You will grow stronger and eventually beat Lord Terra. He's just a silly little monster trying to steal other people's things. I felt a little bit better after our talk, but I still felt exhausted. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. She brought me outside to show me a statue she was beginning to make. Ta-da! It's great, Famine! Is it a tent? No, silly. Do you really not know what it is? I looked again. Can you tell what it is? I also made some other upgrades while you were gone. She showed me the lanterns and a small archery range. Wow, you've really outdone yourself. It's the least I can do for a friend. Famine was awesome. I was glad I was able to find her. I hoped our other friends were doing okay. I would go looking for them soon. On days 11 to 12, I had a vivid dream. I was a fully grown Grim Reaper with my scythe at my side. I was living in the castle that I had escaped from on day one. Everything is as it should be. Not quite. I looked and saw Lord Terror, except he looked like a normal villager. I believe we have a game that needs playing death. With his dark powers, Lord Terror began to steal away my energy and my ability. He shapeshifted into his mutant wither skeleton self as I became a sad little baby reaper. Ah! I woke up in horror at the nightmare I had just had. I rushed to Famine to tell her about it. She shook her head. So that's what happened. I knew you made a deal with a dying human, but I didn't know you lost all your power in the process. That can't be it. Why am I back, but as a baby? Why can he control the dead? Famine shook her head. Maybe our friends know. I think it's about time we go find them. On days 13 to 15, I went out to explore. I was hoping to find war or pestilence, but they didn't seem to be anywhere. I hoped they weren't captured or anything. I realized I was back in the area where I had seen Famine for the first time. There were a bunch of zombies milling around still. I guess they just expected her to come back. Get lost! I drew my bow and defeated them one by one! I didn't realize it until now, but I was releasing their souls from their bodies! I was freeing them! Nice! I managed to release all their souls when I felt a power coursing through me! I grew in size and became an older Grim Reaper! I'm bigger and I have 30 hearts! I realized I could also now turn invisible for short periods! That'll come in handy! I can't wait to try this out later! On day 16 to 19, I found a cave and decided to mine for some more materials. This looks promising. Hopefully I can find some iron in here. As I was venturing deeper into the cave, I saw a group of skeletons standing right on top of an iron deposit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take care of that. I drew my bow. They noticed me immediately and began shooting. Come on guys, I just need some iron. After just a few more shots, they were all gone. Their bows and arrows scattered around me. I mined the iron without any more trouble and got to work. I smelted the iron into ingots with a furnace, then was able to make a new sword, pickaxe, and some other tools. Yes, things are looking up. On days 20 to 22, I started to head back to my base when I noticed I was being followed. I went invisible briefly and waited for them to approach. Then as the figure approached, I turned visible again and jumped out. Whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm a friend. He was a crimson wizard, and the red of his outfit made me think of anger, which then made me think, are you war? In the flesh. Yeah, I thought you looked kind of different. You're uh, not as tall as you used to be. I told him what happened, and he whistled. That sounds awful. Hopefully you can get your scythe and your castle back. Those are pretty sick. Thanks? No problem. I invited him back to my base, and he happily agreed. I thought my house was a fortress, you know, being war and all, but those pesky undead got inside and started breaking everything, so I left. Good thing I ran into you. We were nearly to the base when we saw Famine running toward us. Oh, hey, Famine! She didn't even acknowledge war. Death! No terror is outside! He is threatening to take down the base! Wait, war? Sheesh, it's like I'm invisible. Stay here. I'll go see what he wants. If I need help, I'll call for you. War and Famine got to catching up while I approached the entrance. Sure enough, Lord Terror was there with my scythe. I believe that scythe belongs to me. See now, little reaper. I won this fair and square. You agree to the terms. I don't even remember what happened. And you're just a human. You can't be death. That's my calling. 
You're wrong. The witch gave me the ability to win this power. Witch? Lord Terror screamed and charged at me. I dodged him and used my Ice Blast ability to try to stop him. It didn't work for some reason. What in the world? He laughed and lunged at me again. I slashed him with my new iron sword. I actually managed to hit him, and he looked at me in shock. I was about to hit him again when he slammed a scythe into the ground, pushing me back. I'll be back to finish you off. And with that, Lord Terror ran away. What a coward. I'll say. I looked and saw Warren Famine looking out from behind the trees. I did manage to wound him though, so that means I'm getting stronger. Yeah, but you have a lot of work to do. On days 23 to 26, I chatted with War about Lord Terror. You definitely need some upgrades if you're gonna fight Lord Terror and beat him. I can think of a few things that might be useful to you. Like what? Well, you definitely need to upgrade your sword. Iron is all right, but you need some diamonds and an enchanting table to improve your attack. Okay, where should I go? War told me all the places where I would find the supplies. It wasn't a short list. This might take a while. You want to defeat Lord Terror and get your scythe back, right? Of course I do. Then get to it. I started gathering materials for the enchanting table and managed to make one all by myself. Good job, Jeff. Thanks. If you think I'm doing a good job, be sure to join me on all my other adventures. Just search Z-O, Z-O. On days 27 to 31, I went to check on Famine. I hadn't seen her while I was gathering supplies, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Hey, Famine, how are you liking your house? It's great. Look what I've been working on. She led me to the statue, which I could definitely tell was an hourglass. Wow. You've made some great progress. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet. I wanted to add something special on top. It's a surprise. Could you get some white and black wool for me? Sure. I made my way outside to find some sheep to bring back to the base. I found an abandoned village and spotted some sheep in pens. Perfect. As I went to collect them, I heard something approaching. A horde of zombies were coming toward me. They must have been the villagers that used to live here. You guys need to rest. And I'm so sorry Lord Terror is doing this to you. I used my weapons to release the souls from the undead. I was much more powerful and helped them all in just a few moments. Hopefully, you can all be at peace now. I gathered the sheep and managed to bring them all back to the base. It wasn't easy, but I knew that Famine would appreciate it. On days 32 to 35, I went to gather some more food for all of us. Pork seemed like a pretty safe bet. I know the pigs will be easy to find, but I need to wait until dark for the zombies. I decided to set up a little trap for them, and sure enough, they fell right into it. Impressive, Death. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice? Shame on you, old friend. Then I saw someone step out from behind the mushrooms. Of course I didn't notice her. She was a mushroom lord. She blended in. Pestilence. Did you shrink? Yeah, I shrunk. I told Pestilence what had happened, and she tissed in disapproval. Now, why would you do that, Death? You are too clever to be outsmarted and depowered by some lowly wither skeleton. That's the thing. I think Lord Terror cheated me. He mentioned something about a witch. I think that he somehow won because of her. Well, the only witch I know of is Famine. Hey. I'm just kidding. I've heard of an apothecary that lives here in the swamp. Maybe that's who he went to. This is great information. Pestilence agreed to take the food back to the base while I looked for the witch. Hopefully, she could give me more information about Lord Terror. On days 36 to 39, I journeyed further into the fungal patch in search of the witch. I thought for sure that I would find her, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Where in the world is she? I looked around some more when I saw a group of rabbits. They were acting kind of strange, a little too organized. Maybe they're her henchmen or something. I should follow them. Hmm. Actually, they're probably just stocking up on food. How oh, silly of me to think that they were working for the witch. Then, I noticed that the rabbits all gathered together again. They seemed to be examining each other's food. Okay, I should maybe look somewhere else. Then the rabbits all bounded toward a large mushroom and disappeared. Whoa, where did they go? I quickly followed after them, running straight toward the mushroom. On days 40 to 43, I ran through the fungal patch chasing the rabbits. What in the world? Intruder! A large group of rabbits came bounding toward me. What are you doing in Our Lady's realm? Did you have an inquiry? Is this where the witch lives? The rabbits gasped. You dare call her such a rude name. She is an apothecary of great renown. 
Sorry, I just need answers. I don't mean her any harm. You look like you do. Then the rabbit started jumping at me. Hey! I didn't want to hurt them, so I just tried to swat them away as nicely as I could. Death? What are you doing here? I looked up to see a friendly witch. Friends, no need to harass Death. I I'm sure he has a reason for being here. The rabbit stopped attacking me and quickly surrounded the woman. Who are you? I'm Amelia. I wasn't expecting you for quite some time. I I'm not here to collect your soul. I just need to know why you helped Lord Terror. Lord Terror? He stole my power and made me regenerate. He took my scythe and is using it to keep souls captive in their undead bodies. Amelia gasped and started to shake her head. <gasps> that was Logan Turner. I gave him a potion of luck. He said he needed it in order to fulfill his last dream before he passed. I had no idea he would use it for such an awful thing. She seemed genuinely upset. I can't undo what's been done, but maybe this can help you. She went inside her house and came out with a potion. What is this? A potion of strength. You will need that in order to get your scythe back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again, but hopefully not for a long time. She waved goodbye as I left her realm, returning to the swamp. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base. Pestilence, famine, and war were having a good time together. I noticed they had improved their homes as well as the wall of the base. You've been busy. So have you, my friend. Did you find the witch? Apothecary, and yes, she was very nice. I told them the whole story and showed them the potion. That'll be useful later. I'm glad you were able to find her. Probably gave her quite a scare though. Just a little bit. We all laughed and chatted for a little bit before Famine jumped up. Oh, come look at the statue. I went to look and sure enough, Famine had outdone herself. On top of the hourglass was a skull that looked just like my face. Whoa, it's amazing. You've been a great friend to us, Death. It's the least we can do. We admired the statue together for a little while longer and then went to bed. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to a loud crash. I hurried outside to see what it was, and there were zombies everywhere. I could see Lord Terror standing on the edge of the wall. Come and fight me yourself, Logan. Don't call me that. He snarled at me and then swung the scythe. It nearly knocked me over, but it also knocked out some of the undead. Time to be freed, my friends. I used my iron sword on the group of undead, freeing them from their cursed bodies. It took a little while, but I eventually got them all. You can all be at peace now. Just then, I felt a pain in my back. I grew taller and gained more hearts. I looked at my back to see what the pain was and realized that I had grown dark feathery wings. Whoa, this is amazing. I flew up for a minute to survey the damage. This is gonna take some time to fix. Death. I looked and saw famine and pestilence running toward me. I lowered myself to the ground. What's wrong? Lord Terra took war. The undead were just a distraction. No! I slumped to the ground. I thought I could protect everyone, but Lord Terror was too clever. He needed to pay. On days 54 to 57, we all worked hard to fix the base. We gathered supplies, made the walls taller, and added extra security measures, including a small moat. After working all day, we sat down to chat about our next move. There's no doubt that Lord Terra took war to the castle. Why do you say that? Oh yeah, you don't remember. There's a massive dungeon in the basement. It has cages, traps, and all sorts of things. We actually used it to meet there sometimes for brunch. Sounds lovely. It was. We should do it again soon. Yeah, then cleared her throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but he'll be there for sure. There is a back entrance where we would come in. Quicker that way. Pestilence gave me directions, and I wrote them down. I needed to find our friend before Lord Terror did something awful. But first, I needed to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I went mining for more diamonds. I needed to make some better armor and weapons for myself, since I had no idea what I might face at the castle. I wasn't having any luck, and was about to go search another cave when I saw a glimmer just up ahead. Diamonds! I walked forward, then felt something fall on me from above. It was a huge hairy spider, and he had brought some friends. I'm a friend, no need to hurt me. The spiders kept attacking, and I had no choice but to defend myself. Soon enough, they were all gone. Now, on to the diamonds. The deposit was actually really large, and I managed to make armor, plus a new sword and a pickaxe. Sweet! 
I felt just a little bit more ready to go save war. On day 63 to 66, I noticed that part of the statue had been damaged during the fight. I didn't want to finish it without war, so I just admired it, with all its burns and marks. I'll save you, war. I promise. Hello, Mr. Death, sir! I looked and saw some of Amelia's rabbit friends gathering around me. You aren't going to jump on me again, are you? No, sir. We need your help. Amelia has been captured by that Lord Terror Man. We don't have the strength to get her back. Did you get her back? The rabbits looked very concerned. Of course, he has my friend too. He's probably keeping them in the same place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Death, sir. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, you can wait here with my friends. They can help you. They agreed to stay while I rescued Amelia. This was going to be a little bit more difficult, but I was determined. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here with us. On days 67 to 70, I followed the directions to the back door entrance of the dungeon. It was hiding behind some trees and bushes. Good job me for thinking ahead. I entered quietly and made my way down, down, down. I didn't hear much for a while, so I thought I was in the clear. What was that? I turned a corner and saw a swarm of zombies blocking the hallway. They saw me and started ambling toward me. Get back! I used my wings to fly over them. I fired my ice blast at them from the air, freezing them solid. Peace, friends. I lowered myself in front of a door and opened it carefully. Death! It's about time you showed up. War and Amelia were stuck in cages, and I quickly broke the bars to free them. How did you know I was here? Your loyal little friends told me. They really are the best, aren't they? Sure are. Let's get out of here. On day 71 to 74, we made our way back up toward the back door. Then I noticed a lever I hadn't seen before. It was hiding behind a pillar. I wonder what this opens. Is that a wise idea? It was my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. I released the lever and a trap door opened. I went inside and saw a chest in a small room. <gasps> There's a chest. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I opened it, and inside were netherite ingots, gold, diamonds, and some other ingredients for enchanting. Wow! I climbed back up and showed war. Hey, you can finally make that sword we've been talking about. Right! We continued out, following the stream of daylight. On days 75 to 78, we finally made it out. Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that Lord Terror would hold us there forever. Not so fast. Lord Terror came around the corner, scythe in hand. You dare take my witch and my strongest soldier? I am not a witch. Then I would never fight for you. We brandished our weapons as Lord Terror snarled. Why won't you just die? He swung the scythe, but I managed to dodge. I then swung my sword and hit Lord Terror. He stepped back, then swung again. He was fast, but I was an equal opponent now. I could sense his fear. No, 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 no! He slammed the hilt of the scythe into the ground and blasted us back. Somehow, through some dark magic, he stole my potion of strength and drank it. On day 79 to 84, we all watched in horror as Lord Terror grew and grew and grew. He was enormous! Oh no! We need to go! Lord Terror laughed as I picked up my friends and flew away with them. This has to end soon, or Lord Terror is going to take over everything. On days 85 to 89, we arrived safely back at my base. Famine and Pestilence came running out to greet us. Okay, you better not cry, because I'm not good at dealing with emotion. Amelia saw her rabbits, and they all jumped for joy. It seemed like things were at least a little normal for now. Death, come, we need to fix that sword of yours. War took me to upgrade my sword and then showed me how to enchant it. Wow, this will really help, War. Thanks for everything you've done. Hey, I love conflict, but not when it involves my friends. It's the fire aspect enchantment. It'll give your sword a burning edge. This will help you to get your scythe back. How? Lord Terror doesn't always have the scythe with him. He likes to hang it up in the main corridor and just admire it. I heard him talking about it while we were captured. This is great information, War. If you can fight him off long enough to get the scythe back, that'll be the key to stopping Lord Terror for good. I agreed and went to show my friends. They oohed and awed before Famine spoke up. Come and see what Pestilence and I did with the help of the rabbits. They took me over to the statue, which now had wildflowers growing all around the base. 
On top was the skull, now with flowers and a touch of flames. Guys, this looks awesome. You are the Lord of Death, but we know you have a soft side. I do like flowers. I stared at it in awe. I really did have amazing friends. On days 90 to 94, I traveled back to the castle to retrieve my scythe. If I did it while Lord Terror was unaware, surely I would be able to defeat him. As I approached the castle, I decided to just hide next to one of the pillars inside the throne room and stake it out. I could see Lord Terror back to his normal size. Thank goodness, he was standing around, admiring the scythe. That's mine. I waited for a long time before he fell asleep. I quietly opened the door and snuck past him grabbing the scythe from the wall. I expected to grow into my full form, but something was wrong. Intruder! Lord Terror started to charge at me. I brandished my new sword and smacked him backwards. He brought out another potion and drank it before charging at me. He was incredibly fast, and I could barely see him as he struck me. Oh no! My hearts were fading fast since I couldn't defend myself. I ran away, taking the scythe with me. It won't work for you, little reaper. You are too late. I didn't know what he meant, but I flew away before he had a chance to attack me again. I need to fix whatever he did to my scythe. Otherwise, I'm dead meat. On days 95 to 97, I brought my scythe back to the base and had war examine it. I don't know what to tell you. It looks normal to me. Maybe Amelia will know. I took it to her and she examined it. This is my fault. Lord Terror forced me to make a binding spell. He is now bound to the scythe by an enchantment. How do I break it? I'll have to make a counter spell, but it will probably take a few days. You might even break it. Do it. She worked tirelessly trying to fix the scythe, and I did what I could to assist her. I really need this to work. On day 98, I helped Amelia with what I could, but she said I needed to wait for the result. I made my way outside and admired our base and the statue. It had been a difficult journey so far, but I was glad that I had found my friends, made some new ones, and grown stronger. Even if my scythe didn't work, I knew that I would defeat Lord Terror somehow. Hey, we're really glad that you've been here on this journey too. Be sure to subscribe and search for ZOZO for more videos. Also, comment below on what my next adventure should be. I can't wait to see what you say. On day 99, I went to look for Amelia. She looked a little discouraged. I don't know if the spell worked. You'll need to wield it in battle to see. Well, then I guess it's time to go fight Lord Terror. I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but I'm glad it did. I got to find my old friends again, build an awesome base, and meet you. You're an awesome apothecary, Amelia. Which? But who's keeping track? Go give him, well, you know. I smiled as I flew off towards the castle, scythe in hand. As I landed on the steps, the door was open for me. The undead were nowhere to be seen, but Lord Terror stood on the steps, sword in hand, potion in the other. You can't defeat me. We'll see about that. I took my scythe and slammed the hilt into the ground, causing everything to shake. I felt a surge of power, and I was connected to my weapon again. I grew taller, my hearts increased, and my wings spanned further. You have cheated death, Logan Turner, and for that, you must pay. Lord Terror drank a potion, and he grew taller. As our weapons met, there was a brilliant burst of light. It's not fair. I am Lord Terror, the new Grim Reaper. I earned that title. I lifted myself into the air, letting the scythe swing down with a mighty force. You stole that title. I am the rightful Grim Reaper, and now you must move on. Lord Terror screamed before the scythe made contact, and in a burst of smoke, he was gone! On day 100, I flew back to the base triumphant and glorious in my final form. Everyone cheered as I descended, and they even tried to hug me. You're our hero! The world is finally right again! And that was the honest truth.